everybody how's it going welcome it's friday night here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show and that means it's time for wild cards where we will be uh, continuing to follow nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary as it winds its way from settlement to settlement throughout the vast expanse of the weird west and all of the dark and shadowy spaces contained therein my name is jordan caves callerman and i am the ringmaster for tonight's festivities uh, thank you all to all of you mysterious strangers in chat for joining us this evening. We're very glad to have you here. Just so you all know, we will be playing in Deadlands the Weird West, the latest edition of the setting from Pinnacle Entertainment, and we will be using the Savage Worlds Adventure Edition rule set, which is the latest edition of the Savage Worlds rule set. Don't know Savage Worlds? Well, what are you doing here? Go buy it, or you're not allowed to come back in. JCC? No. No, nope. you can't do that. I'm putting my foot down. <laughs> haven't checked out Savage Worlds. You should do it. <laughs> but if you don't want to, that's also cool. Um, it's not just me and Savage Worlds and Deadlands hanging out here all night with you guys. No, we've got a whole crew, a bevy of beautiful people who would who are just dying to say hello. So let's meet the crew for tonight. A beautiful so, bevy, if you will. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful um, or a be beautiful beauty. No, that doesn't work. Um, so, what I would like to know from all of you folks tonight: um, what is your name? First of all, very important. What is your character's name? Equally important. Um, tell us just a, a little bit about your character and who they are. And then also, I would like to know what is your character's worst minor fear so we talk about big fears all the time you know like what is your worst nightmare is an important part of the deadlands setting but i want to know what thing uh makes your character um just skeeved out or uncomfortable or um anxious or just just the, that small little thing that you just dread you, you know kind of like hearing an uh unannounced knock at your front door on a day when uh, you were expecting to be able to spend some time alone. That kind of thing. That's or a major worse. fear. Uh, that's a major fear? Yeah. Um, I should add that to the, the phobia list. So who <laughs> wants to go first while I try and dig whatever is in my eye out of my eye? I'll go. All right. Very well. <laughs> um, oh, he's really doing it. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Grav Galati, and I play Victor Parrish. Victor Parrish is the fastest and most deadliest gun in the West, and if you disagree with him, he will kill you. Um, he is played by actor Josh Holloway, um, in my head, uh, not in real life, <laughs> because I play him. Um, I was like, he, no, Garof. <laughs> um, who was Sawyer on Lost. Um, uh, and not his, Sawyer on ETU, let's be clear. Yes, very not, not, yes, very good clarification. Um, Victor's biggest fear is that he will be in a tense gunfight and he will reach to his gun belt for some more ammo for his gun and he will look at the bullets that he has and they are not of the quality that he usually buys. So they're still good enough to kill people, but they're like subpar. And he's like, ah, I don't know if I'll win this gunfight. I, mean, I probably will, but it, not. I mean, that's a good point. Um, we, we all know that um, well-made bullets fire a little bit faster um, and a little bit more deadlyly. Um, so that's a, uh, that's a legitimate minor fear for, uh, for Victor to have. So thank you very much uh, for sharing that with us. Victor Parrish, uh, 
collector of only the finest in high quality bulletry. Uh, bulletry. Who would like to go next? Duff Bulletry. I'll go. Um, Very well. Uh, my name is Dom Zook, and I play Buster Buzz Callahan, and he uh, he was the former uh, trick shot in the carnival, and due to some circumstances, stepped down from that post and has become uh, the lead man, the, the, the guy who goes to towns and uh, tries to pave the way for the carnival to uh, slide in there. Um, his... Uh, He's sort of the, the party bard, uh, if you will. Um, <laughs> party bard. Party bard. <laughs> yeah, party bard. Um, his... well, this party's going to be weak. We better hire a party bard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trust me, until you don't have a party bard, you don't know what it's like. Um, his, his probably minor fear is silence. When when he is performing or someone else is performing or anything like that, when he sees someone up on stage, even if it's someone that he's like not connected to, like if he goes to a show of some kind and he's watching someone do a performance and it's silence, uh, when he knows that there should be some reaction to it, he just gets very unsettled by that. Uh, oh, yeah. He wants to try to fill it. So that's a super painful thing for a, yes. for a performer. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for that uh, buzz. The sound of silence, Callahan. <laughs> uh, who would like to go next very loudly? I'll go. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing uh, Midas Buchanan, who is a toy maker uh, who uses Ghost Rock to make neat devices and toys that Not usually... Children. No, no. <laughs> Yet. He's made one child. <laughs> but not no, out of children. Not with a child. Yeah. Not out of children. I use ghost rock to make children, not children, children to make ghost rock things. Yes, no. <laughs> There's no children in Christopher. Uh, and he has a, uh, a little mechanical uh, automaton that he has created named Christopher. That is one of his uh, inventions. And he goes around with that. And that's, that's one of his things. And uh, Midas finds- Before you get into that, uh, has Midas considered slapping a now 100% children-free uh, <laughs> label on all of the products that he creates? Yes. He, he, he's thought about it. The idea came to him and he was like, oh wait, next time I'm accused, then I'll have them ready. Also, Next as time. a fun side effect, it casts aspersions on your competition who don't have the 100% <laughs> child-free uh, label. All I'm saying is FAO Schwartz doesn't have 100% children-free on any of his things. Yeah. <laughs> Marketing. <laughs> anyway, uh, Midas uh, is, Midas has like, it, it's not like a major fear, but he is off put by like lizards and reptiles. Uh, he, he finds them strange and, and he reacts to them like, y you know, like, like oh, mm, and, and just <laughs> doesn't like them. He finds them creepy and weird and they have like big bulbous eyes that, that he, just, he just doesn't like. I share that in common with Midas. I don't like the way they move. Unpredictable, skittery, churlish. No, it's strange <laughs> and weird and, and like, ugh. They, they, they're not slimy, but they always kind of look like they should be slimy. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. All right. I, I feel you. I feel you, Midas. Uh, uh, so he who is uncomfortable around slimy looking, but not slimy feeling reptiles or yeah. lizards. And then last but not least, uh, we have... Hi, my name is Megan Caves, and I play Celestina Moldovanu. Um, she is a witch. She is Romanian. Um, and... Uh, she has sort of a mysterious background. I don't know. It's not mysterious for most of the carnival. <laughs> um, yeah, she's uh, the Lady of Ravens. She does a, a, a show with ravens, so it's kind of her whole thing. Oh, it's like, am I echoing? No. Um, Someone else talking. Mm. Uh, yeah, she's she wants to um, save the innocent by... Uh, hurting the man, I really ruined that quote, but by <laughs> <laughs> protect the innocent and punish the wicked. Thank you, much better. Um, yeah, that's what she wants to do. Um, and her, it's really hard to like not go, well, greatest fear, 
But I think one of- I know. <laughs> I think uh, a little more abstractly from her greatest fear, she doesn't like to be or feel weak. Um, Rosaline was actually similar to that, but for very different reasons. Rosaline just had a lot of arrogance and pride and Celestina uh, has terror. She, she, weakness is dangerous and she fears it. All right, well, thank you very much. I mean, who among us uh, looks forward to times when we are going to be weak? That's a very, very understandable uh, minor fear from Celestina. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you to all of you. And uh, once again, for those of you who may still be filtering in, a big thank you to all of you people out there in chat, you mysterious strangers who join us week after week as we, uh, as we ride these dusty trails and roads. Uh, we, if you are new to the channel, we'd like to introduce ourselves. Hello, we are the channel Saving Throw here on Twitch. And on Friday nights, it's Wild Cards. That's the show that you're watching right now. But we have all kinds of other entertainment here on Saving Throw, new and exciting things coming down the pipeline all the time. Although maybe a little bit slower during the pandemic, it's in, on, in some ways more difficult to schedule things and in other ways easier. So, you know, we're all trying to get used to this new normal that we live in. Um, but we are an independent channel here on Twitch and uh, we get by, we survive and we thrive based on, uh, in, in large part, the, the support of our viewership. So if you are having a good time, if you enjoy what you're seeing and what you're experiencing here tonight, or you just love the community that builds itself around our shows, and you want to support the channel, support the show, help us keep things moving in an ever forward direction, please do consider tipping during the show. It means a lot to us. It helps us continue to keep the operation going. And as a fun side effect, all cash tips and bit cheers over 100 bits go towards unlocking reward tiers, which can have sometimes small, sometimes large, sometimes uh, invisible, for the time being, effects on the game or the campaign as a whole. To see what those are tonight, you can enter exclamation mark unlocks in the chat and follow that link. If you just want the tips link, you can enter exclamation mark tips in chat and follow that link. And also, even though September has concluded, it is, as far as we're concerned, uh, subtober now. Uh, <laughs> no no uh, official Twitch promotion that goes along with that, but we love to have new people join the fold here. So if you would like to uh, sub, resub, or gift a sub during tonight's show, you also get to give a curious ticket to either the players or myself, the ringmaster. These function as limited rerolls and go a long way towards keeping the players alive or keeping things challenging and interesting on my part. Um, also, we are going to keep um, the, the, the sub unlock because uh, that, 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 was, that was fun. That was fun, even though it's not Subtober. It's a, a little extra fun thing. And that little extra fun thing tonight is another Dom song. Dom, da dom, dom, dom. That's right. A dom, <laughs> dom song. song. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. If, no. if we get <laughs> oh 25. God. Dom's like a truck. Truck, truck. <laughs> I'm so if embarrassed. We get 25 uh, new subscribers, <laughs> new mysterious strangers to join the fold tonight. Uh, we will unlock a new Dom song. That's right. Our, our very own Dom Zook will learn a new guitar slash tiny guitar slash ukulele song and perform it for us next week, live on the show in character as Buster Buzz Callahan, the singing cowboy. So that's uh, that's always a fun thing to unlock. Along yeah. With Let's do a lot unlock on there. Yeah. In addition, you can also tip for a toast. Uh, we will raise our glasses and, uh, and toast to whatever it is you would like us to toast to, provided it is not you know, hateful or mean or unpleasant or anything like that. But most of the time, you guys are totally great. Uh, and we love to toast to what you toast to. There are also gold toasts that you can get for free. Uh, you accrue gold just by hanging out in the channel here uh, and in the chat. Uh, I believe there might still be a couple of those left to unlock. Who knows? You might give it a try. And uh, on that note, thank you very much to our moderators, uh, specifically DJ Regular and Cindy David 95 although I know the rest help out uh, in, in any way that they're able to. Um, we very much appreciate you helping out behind the scenes so that Dom can focus less on running the show and more on playing in the show, which is, we, we like to see Dom's bright, shiny, smiling face like that. We, that's the face we like to see from Dom most of the time. <laughs> that's the face we get to see because of the diligent work of our mods. So thank you very much guys for that. We would also like to thank Hero Forge. I don't know if you follow us on Twitter, but recently 
uh, we were lucky enough to receive some samples of some of Hero Forge's new uh, printed full color miniatures. Let's see if I can get that. To... Mine's in the other room, but it was like a yellow cat right. ninja lady. That's definitely not gonna. Oh yeah, the oh, jet pack. You, you, and my uh, my cat person should should hang out. Um, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff you can get. This is a fully customizable miniature that you can create using their three D visualizer on their website. Uh, with a dizzying array of options, and now the ability to add color to your miniature as well. If you, like me, are not a big fan of painting tiny things or any kind of activity that requires a lot of focus on small details for long periods of time, you don't have to worry about that at all anymore. You can get it colored to your specifications all through the website. It is a lot of fun just to play around and build with them. You can check them out at heroforge.com or enter exclamation mark Hero Forge in the chat window and follow that link to check out their website and their offerings. Pretty cool stuff. I have to uh, say getting the minis, I'm like super impressed with like the depth of coloring in them. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it, it's very good. <laughs> it, it is It is not the same as getting a miniature painted, but it's, uh, it's pretty good for not yeah. having to get a miniature painted, especially uh, in the uh, color options outrank probably the number of paint shades that you have at home so uh... <laughs> i just i just built celestina and um thanks to hero forge and now waiting for her to be shipped to me so Ooh, mine my see. buster's on his way oh cool all right nice. well, hopefully in the future we will have more fun hero forge miniatures to show you if any of you end up getting a custom hero forge miniature um tweet at us uh and share it uh use the hashtag uh, hero forge color uh, and wildcards RPG, and we would love to see what cool things you guys come up with uh, from from Hero Forge. And we'll be all like, "Ooh, neat!" <laughs> we we will. We can <laughs> promise that. But um, for real. Before we get into handing out uh, all the things for tonight's game, I'd like to invite you all to join me over here in the JCC Oopsie Doodle uh, Rules Corner, <laughs> where we're just going to talk about uh, one or two things that went wrong last week. We haven't gotten to the recap yet, but we did get to one function of the Deadlands setting at the end of last game, which is telling a tale about a dark, uh, uh, about how darkness was vanquished or a great deed that your posse did in order to try and lower the fear level of an area. Um, I had said because uh, both Buster and Midas were successful on their roles that they each got a point of conviction for doing that. However, I was incorrect. All that happens is, and still, you know, I say all that happens, this is crucially important to the fate of the world, uh, the fear level of that area gets lowered by one, uh, which is pretty clutch. You don't get the conviction unless one of those involved in telling the story has the tale teller edge, which mm. as of right now, none of the crew do. So I'm very sorry folks, but I am going to have to take that conviction away, but don't worry. It's not all bad news, and this- You can't take you know, my conviction away. Yeah, no, I'm gonna have to take it, but, but don't worry, don't worry. I have good news too. And okay. this, may maybe this will blow the minds of any, um, you know, comfortable seasoned Deadlands marshals that feel like they got everything pretty figured out. I have been running fear levels wrong in this new version of Deadlands. Oh. Uh, it is not a negative to any of your fear-based spirit roles equal to the fear level of an area. It is a negative one per each level above fear level two in the new edition. Now that change was made because grit, which used to be a, uh, a player statistic that helped offset that fear level was taken off the table and turned into an edge. So I had been assessing much stricter fear penalties for all of you guys over these past <gasps> few episodes. Mm. You guys you still passed your, your fear test largely with flying colors, but moving forward, I will be using that correctly. So a fear level of three would have a total penalty of negative one to the fear level, if that makes sense. So uh, thank you for joining us over here in JCC's Oopsie Doodle Rules Corner. Let and, me just switch uh, the camera. There yeah, we go. Yeah, just switch it back from my, my cool little firelit study where I <laughs> my rules tomes. Um, and that is the last time we will ever have to visit JCC's Oopsie Doodle Rules Corner. So thank you I'm for sure. being here for I the final like that's time. Probably that's the first time we've ever made a rules mistake. Uh, it's it's not the first. I think it might be the third. Um, but yeah. that was it. That's the last one. Maybe no more third. rules mistakes. Maybe. I win forever. Let's hand out some bennies to all bennies. of you. Okay. Uh, none yes. of you have any edges or hindrances that modify your bennies up or down. So each of you will be getting three bennies to start the session, and we'll hand them over through the magic of the internet. Celestina, three bennies for you. 
Ah, thank you. Uh, here we go. Uh, Midas, there's three bennies for you. Oh, I dropped two of them. Did you pick those up? Did you get those? I did. I got them. I got them all. You dropped them right in your hand. Uh, yeah. Victor, there's three bennies for you. Oh, dropped another one. And <laughs> oh, 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 I coughed them out. I got them. Oh, wow. Oh, out. Right. And then uh, last but not least, Buster, three bennies for you as well. I already well. had them. My good man. Oh, you already had them. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Which also, no, no, that's, he's not that's rich, her. So that's me. Mm -hmm. I also get a Benny for each of you to begin the game. So one, two, three, four for me, the ringmaster. Thank you all very much for that. And let's take a look over here at the unlocks and toast documents. Oh boy, uh, looks like we have a few things to get to already. So let's go ahead and raise our drinks of choice for some toasts. You can Obocop. sort of see my drink. It doesn't disappear too bad. It, it only disappears sometimes. Obocop would like us to toast. You know, I'm such a fool for you. You got me wrapped around your finger. Do you have to let night linger? Do you have to? Do you have to? Do you have to you let, have night, to linger? let night linger? <laughs> Set him up and knock him down. Thank you very much, Obocop. And the answer is yes, we do have to let night linger. Which uh, I think Gunslinger Andy can tell you uh, that knowing that song could have helped you in our clues before yeah. the season. Pretty clutch. Neva <laughs> and Omar would like us to toast. To the Hussman for this week's artificial intelligence nightmare gif. How you sleeping, JP? <laughs> Shut him up and knock him down. Thank you very much, Neva and Omar. Those those movements were weird. Yeah, they were like. If, if you are not, uh, if you don't uh, follow follow us on Twitter or you're not in our Discord, then you're missing the Hussman's weekly gifts. And this week he put together a very creepy robot boy gif uh, for just for funsies for Christopher funsies. Mm -hmm. R.D. Armand would like us to toast a toast. Sadly, Nutella won't be invented for 80 years. Butter and jam will have to do. Mm. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, R.D. Armand. No bread with chocolate icing for any of you. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that could be a um, that could be a Midas invention, but I don't have Ghost Rock in it. Okay. So it might kill Lumpy. you. <laughs> but it's so good. Fractured Avatar 13 would like us to toast. Well, it's time for a jaunt to new haunts and away from ranger taunts led by a dark magic savant. Set them up and knock them down. Ooh. Thank you. That was pretty good. That was some uh, fantastic, I believe that's, is that assonance? When it when it works Ooh. like that? I think that's the, the literary term for that, but it's When, when it's using the, the vowels to... Like the sounds in the middle of the word? It doesn't matter. Let's keep moving. Evil Dice Monkey would like us to toast. To compliment your opening, have an inaudible toast. <laughs> Set him up and knock him down. <laughs> Thanks very much, Evil Dice Monkey. Griffin of Falcon Hollow would like us to toast, putting a little swish into it. <laughs> Set him up and knock him down. I put a little swish in it. A little swish. Vampire 54 would like us to toast. Hope this jaunt is not through hell like the last trip was. Set him up and knock him down. Yeah. Hopefully. Thanks very much, Vampire 54. ETU Sir Ket would like us to toast. Will tonight be when Christopher finally snaps and makes Midas the puppet? Can't wait to see. <laughs> Ooh. Set him up and knock him down and make <laughs> some notes in your little GM book. Thank you very much, ETU Sir Ket. BSP Care One would like us to toast. Just be excellent to each other. And don't forget, we're all Christopher. <laughs> set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, DSP Care. That was my favorite line from uh, Bill and Ted. Be excellent to each other, and we're all Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also have some curious tickets to hand out. Oh, and just a reminder, since this is relatively new, we will be reading out toasts at the beginning, like we just did, right after we come back from the break, and at the end, if any remain, just so we're not interrupting the flow of the show as much. We're trying to make things as smooth as we can. Uh, Zephyrus One would like to give one curious ticket to the players. Yes. Hey. Double GXG would like to give one curious ticket to me, the mm, ringmaster. Thought, Thank you very much. Oh, interesting. What a what a traitor! Um, no, I've done it for two years now. <laughs> certified Torganic would also like to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you. Yes. R. D. Armand <laughs> would like to give one to the players. Yes. Thank you. Griffin of Falcon Hollow would like to give one to me, the ringmaster. But oh. don't worry, <laughs> never fear. Gojira 0307 
and ETU Circuit would each like to give a curious ticket to the players. Okay. Dork Lord Canada yes. would like to give four curious tickets to the players. Wow, that's the one for the Ichiyas. BSB Care One would like to give one curious ticket to me, the ringmaster. Thank you very oh, much. Whoa. But Practical Puck, ever practical, would like to give one to the players. Puck? Thank you. Practical? However, J Matthews 85, ever J Matthews, would like to give one to me, the ringmaster. Yes. Oh. Um, where I was like, practical puck? Nope, I already said that one. Salabak would like to give one to the players, but <laughs> DJ Regular would like to give one to me. <gasps> but Peg Jody would like to give one to the players. Yeah. But Savage Clint would also like to give one to the players. Yay. Hey. Thank you very much for those curious tickets. And oh, also, coaster. it looks like we have already unlocked our first reward tier tonight. Tip your entertainers. Uh, all of the mysterious strangers in chat know that after any good carnival act, the performers pass a hat and the mysterious strangers saw fit to put a Benny into each of your hats that you pass after the show. So that's an extra Benny for each of you. That's one for Celestina, one for Midas, one for Victor, one for Buster, and one for me, your humble ringmaster. So thank you very much, you mysterious strangers. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Strangers. Thanks a lot. Before we venture any further into the Weird West, at this point, it would be prudent to let you know that Wild Cards is rated R slash TVMA slash the Canadian equivalent of those things for <laughs> violence, language, TVMA? and horror, and sometimes <laughs> disturbing and rather dark horror and all of the various accoutrements that come with that that can include from time to time, though we do try to keep things classy, things along the lines of self-harm, and other elements that can be somewhat disturbing to certain viewers. So you have been warned up top, that is the kind of thing that we do sometimes encounter here on Wild Cards, but should you choose to join us on the trail, we promise we will do our best to keep you safe and shield you from the things that go bump in the night. So thank you very much for joining us. And at this point, folks, I'd say we should saddle up. Ew. Last time on Wild Cards, our intrepid carnival performers found themselves still within the town of Nouveau de Part and under the watchful eye of not one, not two, but three territorial rangers who had accused them of kidnapping a child that had just gone missing that they were seen speaking to not minutes before. However, despite things getting very, very tense and almost coming to blows, cooler heads did prevail and the rangers gave them a little bit of time to prove their innocence and see if they could put an end to the bad juju that had fallen over the town of Nouveau Depart. Investigate, they did, and learned that there was a curious little person, a little red man running around town causing mischief and also apparently related to the town's dark past. Once they confronted the newly minted marshal, whose father had been one of the founders of the town with these revelations, he admitted to having made a new deal with the small red dwarf, the Non Rouge, that lived in the Rowan tree just outside of town, uh, hoping to renegotiate for better terms, but instead causing the disappearance of seven children from town. He did tell them how to contact the Non Rouge and cross over into wherever the place in between places was that it lived. And the posse did so, confronting the creature and also the reanimated remains of the children that it had stolen. They were able to destroy the Rowan tree and sever the Nong Rouge's connection to this world and destroy the creature itself. And finally, they were able to put to rest the wandering spirits of the children who had been taken and slain by the Non Rouge and return their bodies to their grieving families. They were able to tell the story of what they had done and lower, if for only a little bit, the oppressive layer of fear and frustration and despair that was hanging over Nouveau de Part. And they also left on decent terms with the Rangers who did promise that they would be nipping at the heels of the carnival no matter where it went. And that was what prompted Nightlinger to suggest that maybe because of the ranger presence, it was time for the carnival to take a little jaunt. And that was the last that we saw of our crew last week. Really quickly, 
Jack of Diamonds V10 would like to give one curious ticket to the players. Thank you <gasps> Thank very you. much for that, Jack of Diamonds. But let's find our carnival performers where they are this week. The four of you wake up on a train car and your feet itch. Hold up. What are we doing on a train car? I don't know, but all my feet itch. Yeah, that yeah, I've been scratching them for a little Looking while. Looking around, there. you all seem to be in what looks like a decently well-appointed uh, train car, a private car, with enough seating for uh, the four of you, two on each side on benches facing each other, a nice, plush, comfortable benches. Uh, window sits uh, right against the opposite wall of the door that you assume leads out into the rest of the train. And looking out the window, it appears to be a very pleasant sunset as uh, the frontier scenery rolls by. Uh, um, well, this is certainly not what I expected. Is it ever? I mean... What, what are you folks talking about? Well, yeah, I assume this is uh, okay. Out of character, are we? We just like woke up here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just woke up in this train. Okay, then I am going the right direction. I think. <laughs> Wait. Okay. Uh, Follow up question. Yeah. Did we go to sleep in this train? <laughs> oh, well, that is an interesting question. You remember, uh, you remember the events in Nouveau de Part. You remember the rangers saying they were going to follow after you. You remember Nightlinger saying it was time for a jaunt. Uh, you remember going on the jaunt, uh, which was uh, unpleasant as they often were, but uh, not the worst one that you've been on, although you've only been on a, a handful, uh, all of you, over, over the time you've been with the carnival. Um, it was very much like the previous time uh, you went on a jaunt, but you don't remember uh, much more than that. You remember coming out in some new place, not knowing where you were, and Nightlinger telling you to uh, go and scout ahead and see what you could find, and that is the last thing you remember before waking up on this train. Uh, maybe we got a new train to see what's ahead. Uh, okay, um, let's, let's do a quick group check-in to see exactly what it is, uh, is happening here exactly. Um, does anyone remember getting on this train? Eh. Uh, Victor? Uh, Celestina, you, you, you seem like... No, I just tried to rationalize any uh, strange situation so that my brain doesn't get upset, you know? Oh, maybe, yes, yes, maybe, sure. we, we, maybe we all got like batshit drunk and ended up on a train. <laughs> Although I, I feel awesome. bad if I don't remember the drinking part of that. I feel like my head would be hurting a little bit more if that was the case. Maybe this particular alcohol affects feet. Well, uh, um, I, I don't think that I was getting particularly drunk because I normally try and avoid getting uh, really drunk after uh, <laughs> the last couple of times. Oh yeah, and um, I try to avoid getting drunk with Mida, so that wouldn't have happened. And a robotic mm -hmm. arm uh, shoots up from behind Midas's back, and you hear the muffled sound of, mm, I'm Christopher. Yeah. Well, he, that's why. He I makes a very good it. point. Yeah. Midas. Uh, well, uh, hey, I'm just going to get up and uh, uh, let, let me see if I can find, like, uh, Leonard or somebody to see what's going on. Vika what? croaks from the luggage rack just above your head, Celestina, and looks down at you, twitching her head back and forth. From above. Hello, your feet also each Vika. Ah! Vika up high. Oh, yes, very good, Vika. You do such good job getting up high. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Buster, you yeah. said you were going to uh, try and, and look for everyone else? Yeah, yeah. We'll see who okay. else is on in this car and then and see if there's anybody that I can in a position of authority, maybe, that um, might know what's going on. Okay. Uh, there is no one else in this passenger compartment with you. It is uh, well-appointed and comfortable, but uh, not too big. Uh, so even the, the four of you in here, it's 
a little bit of a tight fit, but you have traveled on far worse trains. Do, and you stand, oh, oh sorry, go ahead, Celestine. Do you remember where we came out for the jaunt? Where were we? Uh, I ain't ringing a bell. You all remember coming out in a, a kind of nondescript uh, open expanse of, of grassland, uh, which is a very common sight out here in the, uh, the middle or north or south or east or west of the Weird West. Uh, you, you never know exactly where you're going to end up after a jaunt. Uh, and there was nothing super illuminating about your surroundings, which is why Nightlinger sent you to scout. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, uh, let me see. Uh, I'll, I'll go to like one of the other cars and see if there's uh, if someone else is here that we can just catch up with. It's weird that none of us remember what how we got here. So as you say that, Buzz, uh, let me ask a quick question. Uh, you are seated two by two across from each other. Who's sitting next to who? Uh, I'm probably sitting next to Victor. OK, Celestina and Victor, um, and Midas and Buzz. Uh, so Celestina and Victor will say that you are the ones who are uh, seated facing the direction the train seems to be traveling. So as Buster is saying that, and just as he's wiping his hands on his uh, pant legs and standing up to go about his business, you two see the sides of what looks like a craggy mountain coming up. And then all of a sudden, the train car is plunged into darkness. As you're guessing, you all end up going through a tunnel. Immediately, everything becomes pitch black around you. There don't appear to be any sort of uh, lights or lamps or anything of the kind here in the train car. And it's a bit sudden and shocking to suddenly be plunged into the darkness. Not quite as shocking though, as hearing the door of the compartment to your train car slide slowly open and the shuffling steps of what sounds like an individual entering your train car in the dark. You hear oh. heavy breathing and the sound of duh, 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 duh. Midas? Oh. Okay, it's, it's uh, he hello, it's, 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 it's your someone. Gla it's your someone. glasses, Midas. Midas flips his glasses down. <laughs> you flip the lenses of your owl, uh, your owl eye lenses down over your glasses, Midas. Will you give me a notice roll? Yes. I will. Because you have to roll notice when you use those, just in case they blow up. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got a four. A four. A four is a success in Savage World, so a four is a success here. Midas, you flip your lenses down, and as the darkness of the train car is thrown into stark black and white relief through the night vision that they afford you, you see what looks like a male figure, unrecognizable to you, young-ish, standing in the middle of your train car and looking right at you in the darkness. One of his arms kind of reaching out a little bit, and you see intense emotion in his eyes as he just over and over again breathes heavily and tries to get something out. Duh. Duh. And then uh -huh. as you see that, all of a sudden the light comes spilling back into the car, hurting your eyes with the oh. darkness uh, oh. evaporating and the light being intensified by the lenses of your glasses so much so that you have to flip them back up and you all see this figure standing there looking back and forth between all of you with his eyes wide and wild. <laughs> Hey, you don't uh, you don't look so good. <laughs> Who are you? Why don't you have a seat? And as you say that, Buster, he stumbles over to you as the train moves back and forth on its tracks and almost collapses right on top of you. His hands going to either side of the seat and his face being brought inches to within uh, you, the the personal space of your own, and he still <laughs> continues to try and get words out edgewise. It, 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 it's, it's okay. I'm going to try and direct him to, to sit down and just be like, just try and take a breath. Just just, just relax. James? Just, 
James? James, where is you? James? Are you James? You're a plaintive female voice from the hall outside of your of your train car, and the man in front of you continues to ignore it, just looks directly into your eyes, Buster, and you see some intense emotion reflected therein as a very pretty young woman with straw-colored blonde hair done up in pigtails and wearing a plain but 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 pretty sundress just sticks her head in the room. Oh, James, there you are. I, I, I've been looking everywhere for you. And she comes over and, and very gently puts her arms around the torso of the young man that was very, very close to you, Buster, and pulls him gently back to a standing position and puts her arm around him and just starts trying to soothe him with shushing noises and a light touch on his back. There, there. It's okay. It's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, folks. Did, did he bother you? Okay. Is, 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 is he okay? Oh, James, uh, he, he, he's, he's fine. He, she looks at him for a moment as though trying to decide what to say and whether or not to say it. He's, um, well, he, he witnessed something, um, something awful when he was a, a, a little boy and, uh, well, he ain't been the same since. So sometimes he gets these uh, these moods what strike him, and um, you know, he wanders off and and can can be upsetting to folks who aren't used to it. So I I, I very much apologize for him wandering into your your train car. Uh, he ain't even supposed to be in this part of the train. Uh, these here's the private cars, and uh, you know, obviously uh, we can't afford uh, such it's, nice accommodations as it's this. It's all right. It's all right. I, yeah, traumatic events, especially as child is is a lot it's amazing he he's able to get by as well as he is uh james looks at you when you begin talking celestina and his face just twitches with what looks like pent-up emotion of some kind and he stares at you now, now, now james like we talked about it it ain't polite to stare at folks okay it's that, that, okay that makes people uh, downright uncomfortable I get it. He doesn't bother me. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very sorry for the intrusion, folks, especially just as we went through that tunnel. I, I'm, I'm sure that couldn't have been pleasant for you, but, um, well, I'm, I'm glad we got to meet you, and, and we'll just be heading back to, well, to our coach seats now. Uh, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, uh, well, while you're here, uh, we might, might as well make some, some, uh, general conversation, uh, where, where is it you all you all are 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 going on this train oh uh, we're heading to georgia uh we got an aunt and uncle there what uh, we ain't seen since since we were just a uh, knee high to a grasshopper so okay. we're heading that way to uh visit our kin and do a little reconnecting now that uh well now that m mommy and daddy have passed oh uh, which uh, uh, and which which stop did you get on from oh uh I I don't rightly recall. I, I was in such a tizzy trying to get uh, James off the stagecoach and onto the platform and uh, make sure we had everything uh, put together. He, he don't travel well. I, I think it was uh, some little railway town called uh, Hainsbury. Oh, but what the hell is Hainsbury? do you know yeah. how, how far out from uh, Georgia we are currently? Oh, well, I'm, I ain't sure exactly. I, I, I ain't had no uh, formal schooling uh, since James and I were just raised on the on the farm with m mom and daddy. But, um, well, I imagine probably another few days yet. We, we've only been on the train for, uh, uh, what, a day so far, I think? Right, uh, yes. And uh, ha Hainsbury, um, just out of uh, kindness and, and curiosity, is in uh, which... State or, or territory? Oh, uh, Hainsbury. Well, that's in Kansas. Yes. Mm, right. Uh, that that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I knew I, that. Since, because of where this train is, is coming from and uh, what we all know about that. Trains? Yes. Well, um, if... If, if, if it's all I mean, right with you folks, I, I should probably get my brother to his seat. He, he does get agitated in unfamiliar surroundings. Oh, well, I mean, you are yes, welcome. Yeah. We don't have anything else going on in this car. If, you, if it's more comfortable to you, you're welcome to make this 
she and her brother are standing up in the little bit of space afforded between uh, your legs uh, and the, the benches on either side. Not really easy, easily able to comfortably turn around in a full circle since she has uh, her arm around him. Um, well, that's, um, well, that's mighty generous of you, but uh, I, I think perhaps you folks would be more comfortable in, in here. It, it seems like it's uh, close quarters already and us being strangers and whatnot and James being uh, somewhat unknown and uh, a little off putting to folks what ain't used to him. Uh, perhaps it would be best for all parties if we were just to return to our seats, but uh, we're just back there in coach if you want to visit. Um, you feel free to stop by, you know, if you decide you want to get out of here and see how the other half lives. <laughs> Real quick, out of character, we're yes. in, we're in a room, not a car, right? I mean, we're you are, we're... You are in. So uh, think of think of like train cars from uh, we'll, we'll say uh, British British Oriental Express murder style movies, right. where right. there's a pathway outside uh, of, yeah. of the rooms, and these are each private compartments uh, that seat about four people. So okay. You're, in a train JCC, car, all in you a needed to say was murder style movies. Oh, sorry. Oh. Or <laughs> Harry Potter Hogwarts Express. Yeah. It's very much like or the Hogwarts Express. Pergola. It's a pergola. pergola. It's not a pergola. Mm. That's the round thing on top of the train you look down inside of. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. Ah. Or is it? <laughs> um, but, anyways. <laughs> uh, we've we've st stood here jawing enough at you. Um, yeah, we'll, sure we'll have. Get... Oh, well. Don't, don't. I apologize. Don't yeah. mind him. He 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 does he doesn't like uh, talk. He's not yeah. you. Eat him. He likes shoot me. things instead. <laughs> I will shoot that. I do have my I do have my gun, right? I'm just out of character, I do have my gun, right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. on your waist. Uh, why would that be out of character? Out of character, uh, you don't have your gun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gun. Fair. Oh well. Um. Well, then we'll we'll just. Be, be going. Uh, pleasure meeting you folks. Uh, you, you take care. And oh. Enjoy, enjoy the, the, the trip. You and as well. She takes James. Come on, James. Let's let's get Bye, out of these, James. People's, uh, these people's little little uh, seat area. And uh, she starts ushering him out the door. As he goes, James turns his head over his shoulder and stares directly into your eyes, Victor, and just watches as she pulls him out of the car and out of sight. Now, do you think that is what she said? Or do you think he need needs help of some kind? I mean, he seems okay. It just he, felt like he was trying he, to tell us something. Do y'all see that? Like, he was staring at me. Oh, he's staring at all of us at, at one point. But, but, no, but I, 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 I agree end, with... He was staring at me. Uh-huh. What's I, he I trying to bark? Celestina, though. It, it, it seemed like... There was something he was trying to say. Something he, he, he couldn't get out. Yes. Well, if we want to chase after him, I guess we could do that. Uh, or well, we could try and figure out why we're on this train. Yeah, that's probably more important. Seems like we can do both at once. I mean, we have to figure out where we are on train anyway. Might as well go that direction. Go to the back of the train? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we don't have to. Uh, I mean, I'm just thinking if, you know, Nightlinger's on here or something like that, he's probably going to be in one of these compartments or, or further up the train, you know? Yeah, ain't no way he's sitting in coach, that's for sure. But, but yeah, I mean, we can probably do a little cursory check around this car and then maybe go back to their car or something if you want it. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we could do that. Well... All of you give me a common knowledge roll. Uh, Buzz will give you a plus one to this roll. Okay. I got a five. A it. five. That's a success. I got a five. A five. <gasps> is, uh oh, also a success. This is it happening again? I got a six. Boo. Oh. I got a nine. It was a five, but I got a plus one. So. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Ah! Um, mine so mine. five, five, six, and nine. Um, nice. So, uh, Buzz, uh, Victor, and Midas, you all would would know, and you would know this too, Celestina. The carnival, as long as you have been with it, has never once traveled by train. Uh, only only ever by by wagon train or by jaunt. 
which most folks don't like to think about, let alone talk about. Uh, Celestina, you know all of that, but you also feel like you remember hearing maybe one time when Nightlinger was uh, a, a little tipsy and, and uh, giving Leonard a hard time. Nightlinger saying something about not really caring for trains himself personally. Oh, I don't think Nightlinger likes train travel. Specifically train is is not a stay away from it. Right. He doesn't seem like the sort, honestly. Well, but that makes it all the stranger that we are on this train heading to Georgia, and he is uh, nowhere to be found, and we have no idea why we're on this train. Oh, yeah, I don't disagree about all the strange uh, missing information that we have, for sure. Right, right. So I'm just hoping, like, maybe Leonard or or someone is, is you know, on the train that we can hopefully have a little parlay with and figure out what's going on or at least maybe find a conductor or something that we can you know kind of find out exactly where this is headed to in georgia uh, well, it's, yes it's, it's worth searching someone else out at, at least i say if we walk and talk the very least i mean we could go uh two could go one direction to the other i mean is it I assume not an infinite train <laughs> <laughs> and just scope it all out, meet back in Tinter. Yeah. Right. All right. I'm heading towards the drink car. Uh, I'll go towards coach. I, I will go the opposite of the way of the drink car, just in case uh, we are here because of drinking, uh, in which case it would, it would seem to me to be a better idea to not go in the direction of drinking more where Maybe you know, we would end up on some other train. All right, so Midas, Midas is going to coach as uh, well. Sounds just like. by going through drink card does not make you drunk. <laughs> I, 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 you know, you, you make me drunk point. most of the time, actually. I, I, I just well. feel like the chances are higher of me than waking up on another train in an even worse situation if, if we go to the drink cart. Anyway, let's go. Wait, hold your horses. Uh, oh. Everybody... Whenever I get drunk and end up somewhere I don't know, I check my pockets. Check your pockets. We, we gotta have tickets or something, right? We can just walk on this goddamn train. Uh, I mean, I check my pockets. Uh, okay. Uh, is everyone checking their pockets? Yep. Sure. Okay. Um, so you go through your pockets, and you have all of the things that you would expect to have on your po in your pockets. Uh, the normal things that are in your pockets, pocket wise. Um, but pocket things. Lint. Mm, not much apart from that. Cool. All my gadgets and stuff. Yes, you've got your gadgets. You've got Christopher, uh, Celestina, Vika's with you. You have Vika. your things. You have how your we, weapons. How do you get on train? Oh, yeah. That's smart. That's the bird. Rack. Sleepy. Oh, you just woke up here, too. What's the last thing you remember? Vika fluffs her feathers and shakes her head. Mm -hmm. Uh, go! Look! Find! Go look, find what? Vika, uh, seems, uh, <laughs> she kind of s stares at you for a moment as though her raven brain is parsing, uh, this <laughs> multi-step question. What did you look for? Did I send you? Buildings! Buildings? Uh, did oh. I... Look! What? Find! Buildings! Okay, we, People! It, it's okay. Town! We also don't know how we got here. You don't have to stress. Um, Vika seems frustrated by uh, your your lack of clarity with what she's trying to tell you, but she... It's okay. you good raven. Very good raven. <laughs> Vika seems to preen a little bit at that and sticks her head under her arm. Here's a Vika treat. <laughs> <laughs> so Do you actually, actually have vegan not, treats? Not to be confused with Christopher treats. Uh, yeah, I, yes, I imagine I do carry something for them. Okay, so now you know what this means, Victor and Buzz. You gotta find something that you can feed treats to, and you gotta do it. Just each other. Um, <laughs> there is so, Buzz treats, Buzz has Victor treats. <laughs> Vika treats, not to be confused with Christopher treats, which I believe are very small uh, bits of ghost rock. Um, but what is a Vika treat? Celestina? Uh, it's like little shreds of dried meat, dried salted meat. Ah, yes. The old road tack. Uh, you throw <laughs> up a, a little bit of uh, salted dried meat 
to Vika and it lands on the luggage wrap rack up next to her head and she pulls her head out from underneath her wing and starts pecking excitedly at it <laughs> and then does that weird thing where the bird opens its mouth so it can like swallow something solid. It's really upsetting, but she seems <laughs> to enjoy it. Oh, that's the best though. He's so adorable, right, everyone? Look at how cute Vicky is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm glad yeah. she didn't tell you anything good, though. Wait, oh, wait, no, wait. she also seemed to be as confused as we are, except she was looking for buildings and people. But I don't know what that means. <laughs> when Celestina is talking to Vika, we just hear, like, Kah! from Vika, right? And then Celestina speaks in English. Mm. Um, yes. Yeah, let's say that. Celestina speaks in English instead of some weird, whispery bird <laughs> sound. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely what it would sound like. It's English. It's English. Bird Close sound. up was that sound. Okay, so uh, we have a little bit of a logic puzzle here. Midas does not want to go towards the drink cart. This Victor <laughs> wants to head towards the drink cart. But Celestina without Midas. wants to go to coach. <laughs> But since you all don't know which direction the drink cart is, that's not a great point of reference. <laughs> so when you poke your heads out of the compartment, uh, you see a small cramped hallway uh, on the opposite side of the train. Windows uh, align it, showing a very similar view to what you can see out your window, just the other side. And uh, it seems like it goes to the left and to the right, the right being towards the, fun the front of the train, the direction you're moving, the left being towards the back. I'm going to head towards the front of the train where I imagine the drink car is or or essentially the, the, the restaurant car because usually they're away from coach. Um, but uh, regardless, I want to go towards the front to see if anybody from our party is there. Okay. All right. So you're going to head towards the front of the train. So, Victor, you're going with Buzz? Yeah. Sounds good. And the plan is still to uh, split up immediately, yes? That's right. <laughs> Okay, uh, so Celestina yeah, yeah, we're not making this Midas, easy for you, JCC. <laughs> Celestina and Midas, you are heading to the left, towards the direction that uh, the the young lady seemed to indicate was uh, the coach uh, area and the back of the train. Okay, so sure. you all tip your hats or your hat equivalent to each other and uh, turn on your heels in the small hallway outside your compartment, and head off in opposite directions. Um. Before you leave this this train car, I'll just let you know this train car uh, appears to be made up of what looks like a total of four compartments that match your own. Uh, yours was the second from the front, uh, and there are three other closed doors in this uh, train car as well, not counting the ones that lead front and back through the train. Um, Victor's gonna glance in each window as he walks by. All of these doors are closed and there are no windows into oh. uh, these compartments. These are private compartments. And in that way, it differs somewhat from the Hogwarts Express. Uh, <laughs> these are these are meant to be uh, kind of a, a way for the, the more moneyed uh, to be able to travel with privacy and to not have to, to see or interact with the, the lower classes that might be uh, riding on the train. I open every door we pass and if anyone uh, gets weird about it. I just go, oops. <laughs> oops, and, I'm and on Midas, every time you open a door, it's like, I don't. Mm. I'm like, <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> wrong door. You all look the same. <laughs> Much as I love that image, all of these doors that you try on your way, like a child hitting every button on the elevator on uh, the way up, are all locked. Mm. Oh. Aloha Mora. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was right. yesterday. That work on trains. <laughs> <laughs> I got my magic wand right here. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mora. This, this shit should open a door <laughs> or two. <laughs> and kill everyone inside. Yay. I learned and how to say that magic, in Hawaii. <laughs> oh, okay, um, Val. We could knock. So, uh, you're, you're going to knock on. Uh, I'll knock. I'll knock on, like, the one. Yeah, right next to us. Okay. Like Midas is horrified by this interaction, <laughs> but he's kind of, uh, um, so you knock on the compartment right next to yours, uh, and, and you hear from within a, a very, uh, feeble voice go, just one moment. And oh, okay. You hear some, some shuffling and then the, the door gets pulled open just slightly and a very elderly uh, looking woman with her hair done up uh, in a, a, a pretty impressive updo 
with large, very thick glasses, pokes her head out and says, uh, hello? Oh, hi. Uh, hi. Just the checking uh, to make sure you're okay. There was some commotion earlier on the car and just thought we'd say, you okay? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> Why, yes. Oh, good. And my what's, goodness. Thank what's you that? very much for checking. Oh, uh, yes. We are full service train. Uh, what stop <laughs> were you getting off from? Oh, you work for the train? Sometimes. Uh, yes. Uh, look, uh, yeah, when, 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 the, when the train uh, breaks, I, I help. He picks it. Wind train breaks. Engineer, some sort. Ah, uh, yes. Where was it that you were going? Where did you get on, actually? Oh, um, well, I uh, apologize. I, I don't mean to be rude, but I, I don't see how that's any of your business. Oh, we're just making sure that um, no one missed their stuff. Oh, well, I haven't. But thank you very much, although I, I may be getting up in, in years, my mind is still as sharp as a knife. Oh, good. Can we see your ticket, please? Uh, well, it's just a routine check. I've already uh, presented my, my ticket to the, the, um, the ticket man. Uh, what? And we uh, missed it. Why would they put two of us on the same... Ticket checking the, uh, Celestina. The, the, the ticket man didn't tell us anything uh, about that oh. ticket. Okay. Let me just ticket let me man. just clarify the situation really quickly. <laughs> you are all dressed the way you are normally dressed. Yes. I know. And uh, Celestina, you were asking to see her ticket because you work for the train. Can I get <laughs> a persuasion roll from you, please? Yes, indeed. I imagine Victor and I like turn around and see this start to happen. And <laughs> all right, Keep let's go. Yeah. You guys left? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. gone. Okay, all right. Victor and, and Buzz have uh, just, they've gone. I got a seven. A seven. Midas is just a terrible liar, but he's like, uh, seems to have been on the side. And he's like, ah. <laughs> Celestine is not the greatest either. <laughs> Lying is not her forte. Uh, let's see. I will spend a curious ticket to re-roll that. And on the subject of curious tickets, um, why don't we go ahead and give uh, two of them to the players from Mike K seven three one eight and Firewolf hey. four one one. Oh, Thank and you. you know what? Let's throw one more in there from the great Googly, uh, from the great Moogly Googly to the players. Yeah. <laughs> Thank However, you. RVR podcast and Octane two thousand and one would like to give one each to me, the ringmaster. So thank oh. you very much for that. But I will spend this one to reroll. I got a two, so my uh, top result was a five. Um, so she says, uh, uh, "All right." I'm <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if you need to see it again, I. Oh, I'd it helps. It helps you for research purposes. All right, it's just up in my luggage, uh, right here on top of the. Oh Let goodness! Just Never see mind. If I can no. Get over there, and it's I'll fine. have to climb up on the seat a bit. Oh my goodness! No, lady. I have to just, just uh, uh, my uh, back uh, while yeah. I do it. Uh, uh, actually, uh, I think I think we have we have enough um, train ticket research, right? Yes, we have oh, enough. Sit well, down. I, I didn't realize it was research. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yes. Okay. You uh, uh, have a nice day, lady. You know, <laughs> my Robert was a bit of a scientist as well. Uh, not officially trained, of course. Uh, he mostly <laughs> just liked to take things apart and put them back together again. And oh. He had a smile that could make all the ladies swoon, but he only ever had eyes for me. Is I remember gone? when we first danced. <laughs> okay, we lady. At a church social, actually. Bye. It was a we watermelon leave. festival. We had such oh, a... Guess, we just have meanwhile, on the other uh, end the of the train. Uh, as as uh, Celestina kind of leaves, and Midas is, like, reluctant to, like, be rude and leave the <laughs> lady be like, ah, uh, uh, so, so Celestina, you just leave mid story. Oh, yeah, if she's not gonna listen to us saying goodbye, Celestina is gonna leave. If, if my, it doesn't seem like there's anything that's useful in this story, um, well, it's hard to know. She was just spooling up, but um, yeah, there's no time. Midas, you're a little uncomfortable with this, but you still also leave. 
Uh, yes, he, he kind of like <laughs> looks between the, the lady and Celsina and is like, ah, uh, she, oh. she, she, she's going that way. So I, I, I hear there might be train problems. I, I need to fix. Anyways, it was a bumper <laughs> crop of melons that year. So we <laughs> hadn't seen a watermelon festival. Oh, okay. Well, good luck with the research. Sorry, and... I knocked my, my, uh, my mic over. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. We won't hold it against you this one time. And you leave the elderly woman uh, to her story about watermelon festivals and whatnot as you all head for the opposite door that Victor and Buzz just disappeared through. Uh, let's go back over to Victor and Buster here. Um, you leave Celestina and Midas speaking to a random old woman who they bothered. Um, and you <laughs> walk through the door uh, heading towards the front of the train and end up in another car that looks very much the same as yours. This appears to be another private uh, compartment car uh, and one that has the same number of compartments, four on the side, closed, uh, with another doorway leading further towards the front at the end of the car. All right, well, I don't know. I don't think we should um, knock on every door. I, mean, I don't. I don't want to talk to anybody on this train unless we know who they are. Cause right. Who knows yeah. who they are? Yeah. I mean, who knows? They could be. Uh, they could be anybody, really. Um, uh, let's let's do one more car and uh, see if we get that to that uh, drink car that you're looking for. All right. Okay. So you both um, decide to uh, walk past the four closed doors just on the off chance you too get to bother an old lady. And uh, you walk through the door at the far end, heading further into the train. As soon as you open the door, you can hear the sound of uh, merriment and uh, what sounds like laughter, the clinking of glasses, uh, perhaps the, uh, the lowering of poker chips gently onto the table. And uh, definitely, definitely in the background, every now and then, some very lively piano music. As you walk in, this bar, sorry, this car oh. is a bar. It's the drink <laughs> car in that uh, this train is nicer than maybe you first thought. This whole train car has been done up to be like a mobile saloon, complete with a swinging uh, crystal-ish chandelier that is swaying back and forth with the movement of the train over your heads. There appears to be a little horseshoe-shaped bar area behind which a very busy uh, saloon keep is pouring drinks and keeping a, uh, a very full bar arrayed around that, uh, that horseshoe, happy, and their glasses full. There are tables scattered throughout the car, some of which have the green felt of a card table on top of them. Some of them over by the windows are a bit more secure. And, uh, and private meant for uh, conversations of the drunken variety or sober. Um, but it appears everyone in here is having a very good time. And over in the corner, you do see a very spirited piano player plunking out some tunes along with uh, what looks like uh, a gentleman who has a horn of some kind. Buster, uh, you would definitely rec uh, recognize this as a trumpet. I don't know if uh, Victor's ever seen a trumpet before. <laughs> um, but if you haven't, he's got a brass thing and he seems to be snapping his fingers uh, along with the, uh, the piano player. And as you enter, he brings it up to his uh, lips and blows out a very lively uh, trumpet accompaniment to the music of the pianist. It is altogether a pretty rocking car. All right. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I guess we found the drink car. If this is where we were last night. I uh, yeah. don't know, but uh, anyway, let's look around here, see if we've seen anybody from the carnival. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go up to the bar and order a drink uh, too, probably if Buzz is also partaking. Okay. Uh, so you uh, walk up to the bar and uh, you have to wait just a bit as the barkeep is busy chatting up other patrons, but eventually he spots you out of the corner of his eye and hustles over, all smiles and grins. Oh, go. Uh, evening. Well, what can I get for you? All right. Um, whiskey, please. Two. I'm going to look at Buzz and see if he agrees or no. Whiskey? Oh. Yeah. 
Any particular kind? Uh, <laughs> depends on how much it costs, I guess. Well, well, that's a very uh, judicious response, I'd say. Uh, tell me, friend, uh, how much are you willing to spend for quality? Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't get on trains like this very often, and this time I got on without knowing when I got on or why, so, you know, what they say, when in a train car that you didn't know how you got there, you should drink the best drink, so give me the best drink you got. <laughs> Well, that was that. a favorite expression of my pappy. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I ask because, and he kind of cuts his eyes to the left and right playfully as he leans in and motions for you to come in closer. I only ask because I happen to have recently acquired a bottle of Hellstrom Reserve that I keep underneath the bar for the most discerning of customers. Now, of course, I I'd be willing to part with a, a little bit of it, but uh, it, it ain't the cheapest brew. Um, you would probably all, without or both both Buster and uh, Victor, definitely, without having to make a common knowledge roll, Hellstrom Reserve is not something that you can find really anymore. There was a period of time where Hellstrom tried his hands at opening a uh, mass-produced still uh, and distillery. Um, but he seemed to have lost interest, although the uh, word got around about how good the uh, the liquor that he bottled was. So it's very highly sought after. Huh. How much is that? Well, let me ask you a question in response. What is a sip of rarity and history? And also, just a smooth, smooth feeling in your mouth, what goes down like fire and settles into a pleasant summer's evening in your stomach. What's that worth to you? I don't know what you think, Buzz, like two dollars, three dollars? Two. Two. Two's two dollars? Two dollars? We bid two dollars. Two, two dollars? That's... Two dollars for a, for a shot of Hellstrom Reserve. <laughs> that's, we we that's, meant two half dollars. That's what we meant to say. Oh, um, will you give me a persuasion roll, uh, Victor? <laughs> we, as a group, have no idea how much money is worth. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, oh, wait. You are about to spend around 54 modern day dollars for uh, a drink of Hellstrom okay, Reserve. Okay, if that is a fancy whiskey on a train, that's actually probably very close. Hey man, yeah. I didn't say he I didn't say he reacted like bizarrely. <laughs> uh, he just thought he would have to like haggle a little bit. I got a 3. I'm going to go with it. You got a you got a 3? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 don't get shy with me. You know, this is high quality stuff, and I would say $2 might even be uh, me letting it go at a bit of a loss, but I'll tell you what, I like your style, and I like your honesty, he says <laughs> with a twinkle in his eye. So uh, why don't you go ahead and put them $2 here on the bar, and I will slide you two of the finest, finest drinks of whiskey that you have ever encounter. All right, now we're talking. I will do so. Okay, so you take out uh, $2, or you, you're buying for Buzz, I assume, since you're the one that walked him into this situation. Nope. Okay, <laughs> you put down your $1 and look pointedly <laughs> at Buzz. <laughs> what? What? I mean, I ain't got that kind of money. You've been with not longer longer than me. Come on, friend. Don't you know how much he now. pays. Yeah, I know, and I'm hoping Get a raise every now and again. You Even probably gotten two or three. So. I'd love to commiserate with both of you about the boss man Here. over a drink of fine whiskey. Um, you put your dollar down as well, and the bartender takes them with a, a, a very practiced flourish and slides them off into his apron and then ducks down behind the counter and comes up with a bottle with a very ornate silver gilt black label proclaiming it to be Hellstrom Reserve. And it seems like only a very little bit of whiskey is missing from the bottle. The amber golden color of it glints in the sunset and looks mighty fine as he uncorks it and pours very carefully and measuredly two shot glasses for you and slides them across the bar. There you are, gentlemen. Now uh, take stock of your lives where they stand because they will be forever changed. 
Okay. All right, Buster, bottoms up. Clink our glasses and uh, shoot them down. All right. Um, will both of you give me a, uh, let's say a spirit roll, please. Spirit for spirits, I like it. I there like we go, that's you the one. Make a death save. <laughs> no. The best assassin five. in the world. <laughs> At this point, you can just assume that I'm going five? to get five. I'll just assume fives from now yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, I got a six this time, so we're trading. Oh. You got a five and a six? No, just a six. Well, Buster got a five. And I got a six. Right. He thought, Grav, I think Grav thought- It doesn't matter. Let's move on. Uh, you both take your <laughs> your whiskey and, uh, and shoot it down and You'll be damned if this is not some very, very fine whiskey. Now, the way he was talking it up, and since you both succeeded on your spirit rolls, you'd expect maybe something a little more spectacular out of this. It still tastes like whiskey to you, but it is mighty fine. It does go down smooth, and you do feel a pleasant warmth spreading through your stomach, though he looks somewhat crestfallen by the lack of gobsmacked expression on your face. Well, uh... How was it for you? Good. Yeah, it's damn that's, good. That's a. That's a yeah. It's whiskey. It's good. Well, I mean, there's more where that comes from if the hankering hits you. But he sees out of the corner of his eye another patron at the bar trying to flag him down. <laughs> Excuse me, gentlemen. I'll, I'll leave you to your libations. All right. Uh, well, uh, that probably wasn't worth a buck, but uh, you know. Um, hey man, oh it yeah. was good. It hey. just didn't blow your mind because <laughs> you're too, you know, jaded with as represented by your spirit role. Jaded. Oh, I see. That's what that was for. <laughs> um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it, 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 ain't, it ain't the kind of whiskey that's going to get us blacked out and end up on a train without knowing why we're here. No, no. Uh-uh. Uh, and I, I want to look around the car and see if there's anybody here that I recognize. Uh, give me a notice roll, Buster. Okay. Um, can I can I look over at the poker table and see what kind of um, game they're doing? Is it low stakes, high stakes? Give me a notice roll as well, Victor. Okay. Did you you already took what my assumed roll is, right? Yeah, I'm just starting with a baseline five, and let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> yep. Nope. You're correct. Really? Yep. <laughs> All right. Jack <laughs> of five strikes again. Uh, I'm gonna use a Benny for this one. Oh, a Benny for Victor. I did not succeed. Coming out swinging. Oh, I aced on that. Nice. Oh, but I got a one, so that's just a seven. Just a seven? Yeah. Okay, um, so you got a seven, you got a five, uh, and uh, Buster, you were looking around to see if there was anyone in this room that you recognized. There does not appear to be, as you scan uh, the crowd assembled here. There's, there's maybe about uh, 15, 16 or so people in here, perhaps 20, although you don't have time to count because you're looking for people that you recognize which you don't find. But you do see that uh, the trumpet player over by the piano is kind of looking at you curiously as he uh, plays a spirited refrain on his instrument. Victor, you look over at the poker tables to try and get a feel for the game. And uh, you see that all of the tables seem to be playing relatively low stakes poker. Uh, but there is a table of rougher looking gentlemen over in the shadows of the corner back away from the rest of the crew. You see several empty glasses and bottles on the table, and also what appears to be a pretty sizable pile of chips and loose coins and bills in the pot on the middle of the table. These slightly more uh, unsavory characters seem to be playing a higher stake game. Hey, Buster. Uh-huh. You ever robbed a train? No. Well why why are you asking me this because i'm about to i'm gonna walk over to that poker table uh no now you, you've already okay you've already bet a dollar hmm. and on that note we will jump back to the other end of the train uh as victor approaches the uh poker table celestina and midas you leave uh, the, the old lady uh, somewhat abruptly and walk through the door in the opposite direction and find yourselves in a coach car. 
this car is very different than the car you are in. It is made up of a series of much less plush looking benches that are arrayed, uh, kind of facing each other in a back to back, front to front manner, meant to be able to cram as many people as feasibly legally possible into this train car. It is uh, much more cramped. There's probably about, uh, you would say, 25 to 30 people crammed uh, into this car. And though they look somewhat uh, uncomfortable, they seem to be enjoying the ride. You catch uh, low strains of pleasant conversation and laughter. You see a couple people look up at you as you uh, walk in and nod and greeting and go back to their conversations. You also see, uh, since we're going backwards in time a bit. Uh, the door to the uh, on the other end that leads further back towards the train just sliding closed as you walk into here. Um, I think I would just walk through this car, but kind of like keeping an eye on all the people and just the this particular car to see if anything stands out as something to look into more. Okay. Um, give me a notice roll, then. Okay. Uh, five? Five. Um, so you stand there kind of looking around the car, uh, looking at Midas, neither one of you super sure how to proceed, and you just start walking through the train car, just looking around, seeing if anything stands out. You see a bunch of pleasant, uh, bored, sleepy faces, uh, the normal kinds of uh, expressions you would expect to see on train travelers on a long trip. Over in the back corner, though, in a booth that is just sort of shoved up against the wall, you see a group of men having a spirited conversation, and one man, an older man, with Bald, uh, a bald head on top and wisps of white hair coming out from the side of his head, just sitting there on his bench, his mouth open and his eyes staring sightlessly ahead. Uh, do you think that man is dead? Kind of, but I'm wondering, uh, can I, so is he far away from us? Are there like people in between? He is at the back of this train car near the door that you just saw sliding closed as you walked in that leads further back towards the train. And as you look at him, the uh, the three that uh, were talking spiritedly around him just lean in a, a little bit closer to each other and, and laugh as though one of them has told uh, an uproarious joke. Uh, he does not respond or move at all. Uh, so if I wanted to, like, reach over and kind of, like, tap him or push him a little bit, like, You would have him. to reach through, uh, the other three gentlemen who okay. are, uh, seated in that area. Then I'll probably walk over to that group and say, it looks like something might be wrong with your friends there. Midas, uh, where are you while this is happening? Uh, I think I'm also kind of, I'm, I'm sort of following... Uh, Celestina for the most part, but staying a little further back. Okay. Just um, kind of observing, observing the um, car. You see Celestina walk over there. Celestina, you're at the side of them. You're looking at the, the men who are, are laughing and having a good time. So you don't see what Midas sees, which is the old man who is just staring ahead. As you speak, Midas, you see him not move at all, except for his eyes, which just slowly widen and move over to the side to take Celestina in from his peripherals. Oh, well, uh, uh, my dear uh, lady, uh, I'm assuming it's hard to tell underneath all of the the feathers. <laughs> Is it? Well, I'm, I'm just, I'm funnin'. Uh, there ain't no harm intended. I just ain't never seen somebody dressed in, uh, well, so much softness. What can we do for you, miss? Well, I wanted to make sure your friend over there wasn't dead. Oh! No, 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 no. He's fine. He just naps like that. Uh, okay. I, I, I come over and I kind of tap Celestina on the shoulder. Yes, but... What? I uh, I saw his eyes move just a moment ago. I, 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 it's, it's all that moved. The, the rest of him seemed completely still, but but his eyes definitely moved to follow you. Uh, I'll turn back to these guys and say, "Are you sure 
that he's just asleep? Does his eyes move when he is asleep? Because we saw. Well, I mean, he sleeps with his eyes open, so that's already weird enough. I mean, I, I've seen him do all kinds of things while he's asleep, but we often think he done died finally, but we tend to head over, give him a little uh, poke in the shoulder, and sometimes he'll do this, this, this thing where you're standing to the side of him, and all of a sudden he's like, and then he wakes up. Uh, it's very unpleasant, but uh, he's fine. Uh, oh, okay, well, uh, I, I guess if he's fine, then um, everything is uh, well, I guess. Yes. I, I guess so. Uh, can I look around this car to see if I can see James? Uh, you can. Uh, you already gave me a notice roll, uh, and you do not. You did not see James uh, on mm -hmm. this car. However, uh, timing-wise, when you walked into this car and saw the other door mm. slide closed, uh, you were not f super far behind uh, James and his sister. So it is not too much of a stretch to imagine that they moved further back into the train. Okay, well, just like, I don't know, take care of friends, yes? Ugh. Oh, yeah, of course. That's what friends are for. Mm. Taking care of friends. Uh, I guess we go on to next car. Yes, I, you know, I, I just, I, I, I don't, I don't even know. What, what are we trying to find here? How is it that the four of us don't even remember being on this train? I, I, I haven't recognized anyone here. There's nothing that's jogged any of my memory about how we could have gotten on this train. There doesn't seem to be any uh, anything strange about it. I mean, sure, that person was a little strange, and 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 James coming into our room was was odd, but but not odd. I don't know. Well, I think it's one of those things when where when we see it, we know, and we haven't seen it yet. Maybe Victor and Buzz have. I don't know. It is very strange, but there's nothing we can do about the strange. Might as well see if we can find the answer, yes? Yeah, I guess so. Um, and Mid Midas, um, Christopher has been on his back, and he's been kind of grabbing at Midas's ear. A couple times, Midas, <laughs> ah, stop! Yep. Just, <laughs> just back over your shoulder every now and then, a small automaton okay. arm just comes up and paws clumsily at your ear. Oh, okay, M Midas, I mean, uh, Chris Christopher? I'm Christopher. Christopher. Uh, Christopher, uh, walk behind me. <laughs> Sorry, oh. he's been going through sort of like a grasping phase of some sort, and it's, it's been a little frustrating. Uh, you put Christopher down. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Celestina. Oh, don't you program or, or whatever it is him, so shouldn't he only do things that you tell him to do and vice versa? Uh, well, he, he's, he, he's a reactive, intuitive automaton. Uh, Actually, so uh, really, just I, I build I built the mechanisms into him, and, and then the the behavior is uh, is developed through his interaction uh, with me and the world and uh, Christopher snacks, as it were. As uh, Midas is saying all of that, he has set Christopher down onto the ground off of his uh, back, and Christopher is is moving up and down on his legs as though testing his knees, and then leans back, puffing out his chest, and says, "I'm Christopher." Vino. Yes, as he walks proudly behind Midas, following closely at his step wherever he goes. Yeah. Uh, all right, Christopher, just stay close behind us. I'm Christopher. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next car, and I'll walk that direction. Okay, and as you walk through the door into the next car, let us jump back to the hoppin' party car. Uh, where Victor has just approached a, uh, a table of rough-looking customers. They look up at your approach, uh, Victor. Uh, one of them does, at least. A uh, grizzled one with a black beard and a wicked scar running down the side of his cheek. Howdy. Got room for one more? Sorry. Table's full up. He is says, that true? Gesturing at the table. Uh, it is not true. There is one open seat. But as uh, as he says that, two of the other men at the at the table just kind of put their arms on on that the back of the open chair, and one of them puts a jacket over the back of it, and they all just kind of smirk at you. Seats taken. Exactly. 
Victor's gonna smile and uh, look over at Buzz. Is Buzz still by the bar? Did he move towards the trumpet player? I will be moving towards the trumpet player, yeah. Okay. Uh, can I just really quick take a notice look at them and see if they have weapons? Uh, yeah, give me a notice roll, Victor. Uh, incidentally, Buzz, as you uh, are, as Victor leaves you, the music kicks up into a higher gear, playing a, a very lively dance tune, and a few people get up from their seats with their drinks in hand and begin laughing and start moving some of the tables aside in the middle of the train car. It looks like some of them are trying to do a little dancing. Mm. Um, I got a seven. A seven, Victor. A seven is one shy of a success with a raise. So taking a quick scan of them, not wanting to be too obvious about it, but not being able to get too much information because of that, you just look them up and down real quick. And you do notice on at least a couple of them, the telltale bulge at the side of their uh, dusters or coats that would indicate that they are wearing a holster at the very least. Um, plenty, of, plenty of other tables to play at, Fram perhaps better suited to uh, your financial situation. <laughs> My financial situation, I assure you, is plenty. So, unless I'm mistaken, I was assuming this was the high stakes table of this car. Well, and he looks at the big pile of cash and chips in the middle. We are playing for higher stakes, but uh, I don't know that you could afford the buy-in. Well, why don't I have a seat and you'll find out. Well, why don't we see the money first? Uh, I'm not sure what Victor would keep his money in, to be honest, but um, he'll pull out whatever that is. I assume ah, it's yes. just like uh, like that wallets thing. don't exist, right? You I probably mean, have they, a billfold. They if you yeah, they, they do of a sort. They're just larger. Um, so you might have okay. a bill full, Victor. You might just keep some crumpled uh, coins and bills in a back pocket. I don't know. Here's what here's what Victor's gonna do. He's gonna he's gonna put his hand on his gun and flip it out, and then take his other hand and uh, grab his money from inside the holster, and then put his gun back in, and just hold it up. Uh, can you give me a performance roll? Sure can. Okay. Uh, wasted. Uh, that is an 11. An 11? Yeah. Uh, that is a success with a raise, almost two. Um, so as they're laughing and, and jeering at you about the money, you just kind of smile tightly and uh, whip your gun out of its holster. And as you spin it uh, with one hand, you reach crosswise in with your other hand and pull out a cluster of bills as you, without even caring much about it at all, reholster the gun at the end of a spin and start counting out your bills. Over the top of the money, you notice uh, the grizzled man who seems to be speaking as their leader kind of looks you up and down and you see a curious look pass across his face as you're counting your bills. Well then, well maybe you are the kind of uh, poker player we're looking for, sure. Sure, looks like a seat's clearing itself up right now. And as he nods to the other end of the table, the other gentlemen pull their items away, leaving the chair open and available for you to take a seat, Victor. Okay, I will take as a seat and I will nod to Buzz just to notify him that I'm doing that. We follow that nod across the room uh, to see Buzz seeing you nod. Not Buzz, what are you doing? Uh, I, I noticed the trumpet player kind of nodding at me or whatever or or seeing he was just kind of like staring at you while he yeah. was uh playing um then i want yeah I, i'm gonna get a little closer because i probably don't often see a trumpet player solo playing um with a piano player no not very frequently um and so you know i just professional curiosity i want to see what what uh what they're playing and and how that's working out, and then the the dancing and everything like that, it's, you know, it's interesting. It's a show, so he he kind of is curious about it all. Okay, uh, so you start making your way around the impromptu dance floor where the revelers are beginning their dance to the music, and as you're heading over towards the corner where the musicians are playing, their music reaches a crescendo and ends, 
and everyone starts clapping and applauding, but before too long, the piano player has jumped into another lively tune to keep the people on their feet and dancing, but the horn player puts his horn down and reaches over behind the piano and grabs what looks like just a, a glass of water to uh, wet his whistle as you walk up, though you can watch him track you the whole way over to the piano. Um, I will go up to him and... <laughs> I ain't never seen a horn player blow like you have. That oh. is... That's some, uh, some mighty good uh, playing. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, friend. Hey, uh, uh, Buzz Callahan. Oh, oh, well, well pleasure to meet you. Uh, the name is uh, John Miller. Uh, pleasure. Nice to meet you, John. It's, a, it's always a pleasure to meet another musician. Uh, as it were. Oh, I suspected as much. I'm glad to see that my senses uh, pointed me true. You got uh, you got some music in you too, don't you, son? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, what's your uh, What's your instrument of choice? Oh, uh, you, you know. Uh, or, unless I'm much mistaken, do you not play those pipes right there? You got a good <laughs> structure for it. Well, thank you. You do certainly have a good eye, don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I do some singing. Sure, I do some plucking. <laughs> if it uh, if it comes need to, um, what brings you on to a uh, an establishment like this, a roving establishment, as it were? As you uh, as you say that, uh, the trumpet player just sort of nudges the piano player, who's still hard at work. He says, "You hear that, Mike? We got uh, someone who can pluck and uh, pluck and sing here." <laughs> Uh, he looks up at you. He says, well, uh, money, of course. This here's a, a job, and it ain't uh, a better one to be found for a musically inclined fellas uh, anywhere, as far as I'm concerned. That's that's something. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, you wouldn't happen to be interested in joining us for a tune, would you? Uh, we got one that just don't work right with just a trumpet and a piano, but with a, a little bit of strings and a sonorous voice, while we could get a, a right arrangement going. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I've i got uh, people I've got to uh, uh, find. And, uh... Oh, come on, son. Don't you be uh, bashful. Now ain't the time for it. We, we want to just join in for a little bit. Your friends can wait for a minute or two while you indulge us and in share in your musical gifts. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will take a look over at Victor and see how he's getting on. Uh, Victor seems to be uh, dealing in uh, to a hand of cards and uh, examining his cards very carefully. It seems like he is sitting down to play and not having seen Celestine or Midas for a bit and not having had a chance to uh, play in a while, especially with some other talented musicians like these two appear to be. Uh, are you interested in joining them for, for sure. a song or two? Yeah. All right. Uh, give me. Well, actually, let's wait. As you pull, oh. uh, what's the name of your guitar again? Um, <laughs> I keep I keep switching the names of my guitar and my that's, shotgun around. I that's think fine. it can be different every time. I think my guitar is Desiree. Desiree. As you pull Desiree off your back and uh, start plucking the strings and making sure she's in tune, we will jump back cars away from you to join back up with Celestina and Midas. So you two had decided to leave this car and continue on further back into the train? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, as you both walk through the doorway and head into the next train car, uh, you see right away that this one appears to be another coach train car. Uh, also fairly uh, stuffy and crowded, but jovial as well. However, you cannot get past the gentleman who is dressed in what appears to be a, uh, a train, uh, I don't know, what do you call a train person? Train <laughs> staff outfit. Tra train suit. He's a got train a train suit. suit. He's got a train suit on, <laughs> toot toot. No. Um, and he greets you as you walk through the door and looks at both of you up and down and then says, tickets, please. Uh, um. <clears throat> well, uh, yes, tickets. I left back in car. Uh, we would have to go back gate. Uh, right, right. We, we were in a, a, uh, uh, a private car and we decided to come up here because we made a friend who told us to come up here. 
Oh, well, that's no problem. I've reached the back, so I'll just join you at your room. I'll, I'll just follow you. I'm going that way all the same. Oh, we go back to room. Okay. Uh, I suppose we go back to room, Midas, and then um, we come back. Real quick, Midas, I, I noticed you were making, like, the miming motion of checking your pockets. Did Midas actually do that? Oh, yes. Um, as you're doing that, you feel uh, something in your uh, breast pocket uh, of your apron that feels, like, out of place. Reaching in uh, there, you see a, uh, a small paper rectangle that looks very much like a ticket. Uh, actually, uh, I, 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 I brought, I brought my ticket with me, right, right here. Oh, oh, well, well, that's good. And he takes it from you and looks at it and then punches it and hands it back to you. And, uh, did you have yours with you as well, miss? Uh, she just kind of is like digging <laughs> around. So you reach into the depths of your corset and making a slight face, you pull out a ticket. Oh, I oh, guess there I we do are. Uh, uh, maybe you hold that and I'll just clip it from here. He uh, <laughs> kind of looks at it, uh, uh, slightly stained with sweat as it is, and uh, reaches out and clips it. Uh, thank you very much, folks. Uh, Moves yes. past you and further up into the train. I would like to look at that ticket and see what it says. Yes, you, same. <laughs> will both of you please give me a smarts roll at a minus four? I imagine both of us like look at each other and then immediately go like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, smarts. The minus four? Yeah. That's a four. I got a four. Four is I a success. I got a zero. A zero uh, give me, is not a success. Give me uh, one of them curious tickets. You got to ask nicely. Can I please have a curious ticket? You may. Thanks. <laughs> Yay, it's on the D6. Okay, so I got a six. Six, okay, uh, so you both succeeded. Um, you look down at the ticket and uh, it says, uh, admit one, train ticket. This doesn't even say where we're going. It's yeah, but it, it seems fine. When did we buy these? Have we had these on us the whole time? I, I distinctly remember us searching to see if we had tickets while we were in our room previously. Well, I actually, agree. Uh, as you're thinking about that, um, your- We might not have checked our pockets. Yeah, pretty. you don't know that you checked all of your pockets or, or uh, Celestina, you don't remember her rooting around in her corset. Um, so it's possible that you might've just missed it before. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, however we got here, we, we, we got here, uh, uh, we, we are here at least somewhat legitimately, I guess we can say. Are we, though? I don't know. It could also be some strange world where a uh, ticket just magically appears when you need it. I, I mean, I, I guess we can't rule that out of the possibilities, but I'm, I'm not saying it, it strikes me as the most uh, likely possibility, but I guess we don't have any evidence in any direction at the moment, so let's no. try and find James and see if there is something he's really trying to tell us, or, or maybe we know someone in this next... I, I don't know. I, I'm honestly completely befuddled as to what's going on here. Yes, it's okay. I've been befuddled before. We can figure it out. Uh, so, looking around this car... Did you say James was in this car? I don't remember if you said. Uh, well, you haven't looked for him yet. You were dealing with the ticket agent. Um, then but... would like to. Yes. Uh, give me a notice roll. Can I also? You can. Mm. Nine. Nine? Success with a raise. Midas? Fifteen. 15, a uh, success with a uh, couple <laughs> raises there. Um, so both of you looking around, uh, as the only familiar face in this train, you both immediately zero in on James and his sister. They are seated against a window and James seems to be very agitated 
and is just kind of, he has his head in his hands and he's just sort of shaking his head back and forth as his sister sits next to him and uh, just gently strokes his back and whispers soothing words. You see the other people in their area seem to have kind of scooted away to the side a bit and are trying to have a conversation without looking at the two of them. And as you look over, uh, the sister looks up and catches your eye and, and sees both of you and gives a, a kind of half smile and, and nods and sort of shrugs her shoulders and goes back to uh, comforting her brother. Well, uh, there he is. He, he doesn't seem to be any, in any particular better situation than he was when we were talking to him earlier, but oh. I don't know. We could just try to talk to them again, see if we can get anything new. Or we can, uh, uh, is, there's another car beyond this one, yes? There is, there is a door at the back of this train car as well. Or we can head to the next car as well. We can do both, I suppose. Maybe we could at least see if he's able to tell us whatever it was he he was trying to say. Try, trying to get trying to get the words out. It, it it felt like there was something he was he was trying to to express. Yes, it seemed that way. Let's go and uh, see if we can get any more info. All right. So we'll walk over to them. Okay. Uh, so you start walking over to them, and um, the uh, the sister looks up as you approach, and and her eyes kind of like seem to be trying to communicate something to you. As you walk over, she looks over at her brother and 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 says, I, I'm sorry, did you did you need something? Oh, uh, well, we were just uh, getting exercise, walking about train, and thought we'd say hi, see if you want to chat anymore. Oh, hi, uh, yeah, maybe later. Uh, James is, is really having a difficult time right now, and ah. I, I, I need to get him calm, or else this whole trip is going to be quite a, a, a production. So well, I, I, um, I apologize. Well, is, 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 is there anything perhaps we could do to help? James, I, calm down. He, it, it, it seemed like when he came into our uh, chamber, he let, let, he had something he, wa he, he wanted to express to us. James is now look, looking up at you and, and rocking back and forth as he clutches his head. And she looks over at him and, and says, no, 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 Mr. I, I appreciate it, but it's familiarity he craves. And all, all of this commotion is really getting him agitated. Uh, maybe we can talk later, but I, I, I really need to just get him calmed down. Uh-huh. Yes, okay, well, if uh, there is something that Jams or, or you wanted to talk about, uh, we, we are around, feel free to come. We know where to find you. Yes. Okay, uh, I, on to the next car, I guess? I guess so. Maybe he's just a, a slightly disturbed passenger. Maybe. Uh all right, so you guys are continuing on to the next car? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You uh, leave James and his sister, and you go to the back of this train car and pull the door open uh, and walk through into a much darker car with just a couple windows that is stacked high on either side with what looks like luggage and trunks and uh, all manner of things just stacked and tied up against the walls to keep them from sliding around. It appears you are in a storage or luggage car of some kind. And as you look around in the gloom and your eyes adjust to the dim, will both of you give me another notice roll? Yeah. I got a five. Five? I also got a five. <gasps> uh, and you know what they say, two fives make a success for each of you. Uh, as you look around and your eyes adjust to the dim, you both see what looks like a white face just pop down below a, a tower of luggage um, on the right-hand side of the car. Oh, wouldn't it be weird if there were stowaways, Maldis? <laughs> uh, well, I, I think I saw something over. Oh, uh, yes, that that would be that would be a um, a strange situation to uh, find the train in. Yes. yes. And then Maldis kind of turns and looks at the the face again. Uh, it's mean, gone. Uh, just just behind a, a, a pile of trunks, it appears to have vanished. Uh, but mean, um, we don't think there are stowaways, right? And so I am just going to 
And Midas kind of walks over to the uh, the pile and then kind of <laughs> like pops his head around the side to try and see what's there. Okay, uh, you pop your head around the side really quickly and see uh, just another stack of luggage. Just luggage, uh, like oh. I, I expected to see. Uh, yes, that that is proper. Huh. That's strange, because I too thought I saw a face. Uh, if there were to be anyone here, we would probably be the right people to um, appear to. Because that way we don't have to go get train stuff. They wear train suits, you know? <laughs> the, 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 the train suit people uh, would, would probably be much less inclined to be kind to stowaways than we are. True, as we don't work for train, unlike we said to Lady earlier. No, we, we were lying to that woman. Indeed, yes. Poorly, but you know. Are you it guys, worked. like, wanting to make a <laughs> persuasion roll, or...? I sure. don't think we're sure. What's the I'm, goal here? Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, <laughs> no, I know, I know what the goal is. Oh, um, will do. both of you give me a persuasion roll, please? Yes. Or I, why don't one of you support the other? Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, Midas, why don't you support Celestina since she was the one who first started talking about so stowaways? Solid thinking. Uh, I got a three. <laughs> okay, that is All not right. enough to support. Celestina, you're on your own. I aced it, so that's good, because the other one was a one. Ooh, I aced it again. Um, that is 11. 11? Yeah. All right. Uh, that is a success with a raise, almost two. As you call that out and Midas tries to nervously agree with everything that you're saying in order to shore it up, uh, you hear a sigh from back behind the pile of trunks. And Midas, as you watch, you see, you hear the clicking of a latch as what you thought was a pile of trunks in front of you swings open to reveal a compartment. And a portly man dressed in what were probably once very fine clothes that are now rags and shambles kind of comes crawling out and says, okay, okay, I apologize. I am not going to cause problems, but I have to and he looks over down the train car towards you, Celestina, and his eyes go wide. And he gets up on his knees and puts one knee in front of him and bows his head uh, and says, Your Majesty. No. <laughs> and Who let's are you? Jump back over to the other train car, the <laughs> saloon train car, where um, Buster has joined the band in the corner and is striking up a lively tune. Let's get a performance roll from you, Buster. Oh, yeah, Don't worry about sure. that. That's just the crickets that indicate we're about to head into the saloon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, performance. Them saloon crickets. Uh, that's a six. A six? That is a success. So you pull out Desiree and uh, on the count of three with the one and a two and a three, you and the pianist and the horn player all at once jump into a lively rendition of a very popular dancing and, uh, and singing song around uh, uh, most parts of the country nowadays. Uh, you launch into it putting your heart and soul into it, Buster, as you strum the guitar strings and sing out loud to the accompaniment of the horn and the piano and all the folks in the train car seem to lighten their spirits and start dancing even more fervently as you do so. And uh, Buster, you feel pretty good doing this. Uh, it, it's nice to be able to just play uh, with some musicians and, and just just let loose a little bit. Mm. Um, meanwhile, over at the table, Victor, can I get a gambling roll from you, please? Yeah. Ooh, I aced it, but this one's cocked. I double aced it. Ooh. Uh, that is a 10. A 10. That is a success with a raise. Let's see. This will be opposed here. You want to keep it? Yeah, I'll keep it 10. Ooh, that's trash. I'm going to spend a curious ticket. Slightly less trash, but still trash. Um, Victor, you lay down a full house uh, after this whole 
whole table was so sure you were bluffing, they called every single raise and bet that you made, and to their collective groans, you reach out and rake the pile of winnings towards you. <laughs> and as you do that, the one with the scar and the black beard says, all right, all right. So you play a pretty good hand of cards, but uh, I'm curious, you also, as good with that piece at your side as you make out to be? Why, you wanna find out? Oh, oh no, 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 no sir, not me. It's just, uh, and he looks at the rest of his friends around the table who all are looking around as though afraid of being overheard and just casually leans in a little closer. Oh, it's just that, uh, we'll see we're down a man and we got a job coming up that we could use someone with your skills for. Tell me, what do you know about the uh, warlords of Shan Fan? Meanwhile, back over at the piano, Buzz, uh, you with a, a flourish of strings and a final yodeling yell to cap it all off, you complete your song and the entire crowd in the car, uh, apart from the very serious poker players and Victor over in the corner, break out into thunderous whooping applause and the horn player steps out and gestures grandly to you indicating that you should take a bow uh, before the piano player again jumps into a rendition and the horn player kind of pats his sweaty brow with a handkerchief and says, my, my friend, that was uh, quite some music there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just surprised I could keep up with you all. <laughs> well, keep up you did. Keep up you did. Though, um, well, no, no, I, I shouldn't say anything. Well, no, go ahead now. We played a song together. We're like brothers now. Well, I, I suppose there is a kind of poetry to that, ain't there? <laughs> well, um, I don't mean no offense, friend, but I couldn't help but notice, uh, trained eye as I have, that your hands appeared to, uh, Tremor a mite more than I would expect from someone as skilled with the strings as you are. Now, perhaps I—I I, don't—I don't mean to upset, and perhaps I have—I uh, have far overstepped my boundary. It's just, well, I—I I feel like you're a kindred spirit to myself, son, and I'm wondering, are you whole? Uh, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Uh, I'm, I'm as whole as anybody else on this train, I imagine. Uh, I was too. I was too, oh yes. Whole as anyone else. I, I uh, wouldn't let anyone see the weakness inside me that was spreading day by day. And that's what led me to, uh, well, this here job. Just wanted to get away from the life and the folks I knew to be able to live out the rest of my time here on God's green earth the way I I wanted to, of my own accord. And Well, son, I don't got that weakness anymore. You're saying when you got on this train, whatever affliction you had, went away oh no 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 i ain't saying nothing of the sort what i am saying is working for our boss and working on this train comes with uh, a few perks one of which is a uh well a, a tonic a proprietary substance that our employer keeps jealously guarded but one that has all but cured me of my affliction. Uh, son, well, you got a way around those strings, and when I say you can sing, why, well, you can sing. Now, we would be just pleased as punch to be able to add a third to our, uh, our musical ensemble here, and in addition to mighty fine pay and New faces all the time. There are 
some health perks that I think you might be mighty interested in, son. You catch my meaning? I think I uh, am picking up what you're putting down, as it were. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure my boss would necessarily like uh, a headhunter coming after his uh, his own employee. Well, I'm sure, and I, I should have <laughs> assumed you were already gainfully employed. However, I very much doubt that you're getting paid what our boss will pay. And even if you are, well, I imagine our boss would be more than willing to bring you on board once he sees what you can do. <laughs> and I'm sure he would offer to top any amount of payment. Who, Who is this? mysterious boss of yours what's his name well, let's let's sit a spell and chat you and me and we'll see if we can come to understand one another better all right and as celestina and midas stand in the luggage rack with a kneeling bald man in front of them victor sta sits leaning in at a poker table to a proposition involving Shan Fan and the warlords that operate there, and Buster speaks to the very spirited horn player about a potential employment opportunity, I would say now is as good a time as any for us to take a very quick break. So folks, give us just five minutes or so to attend to those necessary needs that the human body sometimes thrusts upon us, and we will be right back with you mysterious strangers in chat. Don't go nowhere. We sure won't. See you shortly. Welcome back, folks. Thank you for uh, not venturing too far afield while we saw to our basic biological needs. Uh, we very much appreciate you sticking around. And before we jump right back into the wild cards action, we have a couple of toasts to deal with. Toast. Hey. Everyone, raise your drink of choice. Lady Imago would like us to toast. The curse of fives continues. <laughs> um. <laughs> And knock them down. Thank you very much, Lady Amago. But what can it mean? SF Giants 49er would like us to toast. Yeah, a new train adventure with the wild cards. <laughs> Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, SF Giants 49er. And Yanto7 would like us to toast. Itchy feet and Vika treats, a drink mediocre <laughs> and high stakes poker. Amid all the fives, Christopher thrives here on the Disorient Express. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clever. And that's knock him good. down. Well done, good. Yanto Seven. Thank you very much for that. The Disorient Express. Really like that. <laughs> also, Terrible, Voice Games, and Hosok Tier would each like to give a curious ticket to the players. Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Voice Games, however, or sorry, nope, Voice Games did that. Uh, Dead Custodian, however, would like <laughs> to give a curious ticket to me, the ringmaster, so thank you very much, Dead Custodian. We have also unlocked a draw. Draw, 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 draw. I don't even know who said it first. I said I it did. quick. It doesn't it actually so many matter, times. though, whether Midas <laughs> or Celestina said it first, because Buster Callahan is tonight's random recipient of an official it. Savage Worlds Adventure Deck card. So, Buster, even Turn though it. you didn't say draw, tell me when to stop. Draw. Oh, that's a good way of doing it. <laughs> out of the frying pan. Play to get the party out of some trouble, out of some troublesome or deadly incident. This leads to some other trouble, however, such as capture, escape to a new location with its own harrowing adventure, or the sacrifice of a noble ally. Out of the frying pan, quick, down the garbage chute. You got that in play from the okay. mysterious strangers in chat. That's Buster, fun. You can play that Dom, at any point. Let's save some time. Use it now just to get us off the train. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. We don't have any noble allies. We can make one real quick. I bet you hey, guys you, could if you you're pretty really... noble. Uh, <laughs> Want to be our friend? <laughs> All right. Alrighty. Let's jump back in, folks. Um, and let us join up with Celestina and Midas back in the dim luggage car as the man dressed in once fine clothes gets down on one knee and bows his head deeply, Celestina. Your Highness. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how excited I am to be seeing you. Uh, you, you probably do not know who I am. The, the last time we met, you were all very, very small, but uh, perhaps your mother has spoken of me. I am her cousin after all, uh, uh, Duke Popescu. Oh, my 
okay, lots of things. Oh, what what do you mean, my mother? When is the last time you saw my mother? Well, and he adopts a very sorrowful expression and places a hand over his heart. It has been many, many years now since that horrible day. But this is, this is incredible. I, 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 I thought I suspected when I heard your voice speaking to your curious friend here, I thought that is the tongue of, of my home. But I thought, how could this be? And then I see your face and you have, you have your mother's features. It's quite oh. striking. And I knew right away, little Celestina, the princess, and I cannot believe this. Okay. More than one Moldovanu has survived? Wait, well, hold on. What do you mean more than one? Who else? You? Is that what you're referring to? Mm. Who else? No. Who? Uh, your Majesty, I, I am but a, a humble duke. I, I, I have been reduced to hiding on this train and being being smuggled across your country for Wait. in all to escape those enemies that would seek to destroy your family and all the rest of Romanian they did, nobility. They did destroy my family. That's why I'm here. And, well, and listen, it is not safe. If 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 there's someone who is who is what, chasing you here, are they on this train? No, no, Your Majesty, I I, I would not risk this revelation if they were on this train, but you see, they did not destroy all of the royal line. You survive? Oh, uh, to do what? I was, I, I was very young. I, I can't do anything. If I go anywhere near that, they kill me. Well, What's the point? This country is somewhat friendlier to foreign nobility and in, in exile, for you okay. see... Your brother survived as well. What? What? Did you not know? No, no. He, where has he been this whole time? Where is oh, he? My sweet little princess, this whole time left to your own devices thinking your family had been taken from you in front of your eyes and yet your brother lives. Where is he? He has been hidden. Celestina, here in this country, this big expanse of land where people may disappear, disappear, but the time draws near for him to step forward and reclaim what belongs to him and to you. Celestina, I am on this train to go meet with your brother. In Georgia? Is that where you're going? No, 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 of course not. This train uh, goes many places uh, across this great land, but the last place it goes is that great apple city, New York. And there, your brother waits with his allies, gathering his finances and, and his legal paperwork to return to the home country and reveal his presence and retake the throne which so rightfully belongs to him and to you. Your Majesty, you, this is, this is fortuitous news. You, you, you must, you must come with me. You must, you must join me. We, we shall reunite the two last surviving Moldovanos and together you will return. He alone would not be perhaps an, enough, but the two of you, a united front with this, this could be the, the, the killing blow. We need to put down the seditious rebels. Well, I, I think he's actually kind of busy. Who? Oh, what do you mean? Who's busy? Well, I, I mean, you, you, you know, we, we, we have our, our contracts with, with Night, Nightlager. You, you can't just this leave. This is my family and my country. Celestina. Yeah. Will you give me a spirit roll at a minus two, please? Yes. Oh, at uh, a minus two? Yeah. Can I have a curious ticket? You can. Ooh, 
Okie dokie. I'm going to use a, a Benny. Okay, uh, a Benny to re-roll. Go for it, Celestina. Oh my god. Is it a five? I'm going to use... No, I'm going to use one more Benny. One more I Benny, I Celestina. I can't for the life of me roll high enough. But this time, this time I won't. Okay. I got a uh, two. Oh no! Celestina, your feet itch very slightly as the thought of what this man is laying out in front of you finally pierces your brain. This is incredible. This is earth shaking. This completely pulls your foundation out from underneath you. You are not the last surviving member of your family. And this man, this Duke, this cousin of your mother is on his way to meet with your surviving brother. This is incredible news. This feels like old world magic, you know? Like, 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 how, how, I don't even know how I got on this train and then here you are and you tell me my brother is alive and is trying to take back what was taken from us? This is truly a sign that, that your family are, are chosen by, by the divine or whatever higher power to be on the throne. No, this wait, is- Wait, wait. Celestina, now- I'm sorry, who is this peasant that speaks so plainly to you he, and to me? No, 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 he's okay. He, he, he friend, he, uh, like advisor, uh, but like, like very good and noble advisor. Why well, he does not I, avert I, I, his I'm... eyes when he talks to us? Oh, I, I, it, it's okay. Well, listen, I, I left uh, all of that when I was only seven, and it's not had a lot of uh, people treat me like royalty for quite a while. Which well, is... don't you worry, Celestina. Well, between myself and and your brother's attendants, we will get you up to speed on what. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, Celestina. No, 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 now think about what's going on here. If, if, if this man is who, who he says he is and what's going on here, you, you, you can't just abandon the carnival. You, 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 you can't abandon Nightlinger and all of us. You, you know the rules, the, the family comes first. Friend, yes? friend, the man turns and looks at you and puts a hand on your shoulder and says, do you not want what is best for Celestina? Midas, will you give me a spirit roll, please? Yes. I got a five. A five oh. is a success. Actually, I rolled two fives, just if you're like, wow, Double weirded fives. out about all this stuff. Not oh a 10, God. still just a five, but extra freaky. Um, Midas, you are not quite sure what to make of this situation, and your foot itches something powerful. Do you uh, want to take a look at it? Yeah. Can you give me a smarts roll at a minus three? Smarts I can do. To find your foot? Actually, a smarts roll at a minus two. Because, okay. yeah, for a reason. <laughs> because, yeah. You really can't find your foot. Can I get a curious ticket? I got a four, which is you a You can. Okay, I aced on my D10. Uh, cocked it. Minus two, so I rolled a 15 which is a 13. A 13, that is a success with two raises. Midas, as this man speaks to you and looks pleadingly into your eyes, your foot itches mightily and you just pull up the bottom of your boot and look down at the bottom. Oh my God, what is that? What is that? Oh my God! And then it, you realize you have something on the bottom of your foot and brush it off and ah. back up. Wait, Is that what? Uh, Sorry, uh, there was a moment there. I, I thought there was uh, so something strange. Oh, uh, yes, yes. These, these trains for the peasantry is uh, very, very strange. I, I, I don't appreciate being called peasantry, okay? You know, my, my family is involved in American politics. I'm not myself. But uh, Celestina is, is, is part of us, is, is one of us now. I, I, Celestina, look. I, I, I don't know who this man is, but, but doesn't something seem strange about this? Everything is strange about everything. I mean, how can you say this one is more strange than this thing? I this, don't know. 
Please it's not strange, it's miracle. Sure, yes, miracle could be. But let me tell you, Knight Linger, I think, will understand. And I don't have to leave entirely, but the whole purpose of me being in this carnival, if my brother is alive and we go back, well, then I don't have I don't have need of it anymore. I mean, I would miss it, but I could figure it out in a different way. We will yes. buy you many carnivals when you return to the throne. No, it's not the carnival. It's... Ugh, never mind. Uh, uh, okay. Either way, Midas, I can't get off this train until we get to New York, I guess. Right. So we have time to figure out what's going on, figure out what I'll do in regards to uh, my families. <laughs> Many days. Uh, maybe as perhaps um, I could pass the time with you in your car so I do not have to curl up into ball under fake luggage. Uh, yes, it, it's a bit of a tight fit, but you're you're welcome there. It's another part of my family. <laughs> oh, you are most gracious as a Moldovanu already. Oh, I can see this will be so great for our homeland. Uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry, Celestina, but this this seems like like too large a coincidence. I, I I I just can't believe that everything here is as it seems. Your valet is very presumptuous, no, Celestina. C -C Celestina. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that, that, that I, I had I had doubts about your your royalty history and everything, but I, I mean not not that I, I had any doubt. But look, it, doesn't this feel doesn't this feel too convenient? I, I don't know. It feels wait, wait, just wait. as convenient as we have tickets in in corset, <laughs> which which also also feels too too convenient, doesn't it? Right. We, 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 we showed up here on the train. We, we, we don't remember how, how we got here. The, 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 the tickets that we need yes, are in yes, our pockets. Yes, and yes. This, this man knows man you. This very talking, but this is a celebration. Let us talk over drinks. Well, perhaps in your in your compartment. I assume you're uh, doing well. Oh, uh, well, yes, seemingly, but uh, uh, we have other companions. Uh, I think they're in the drink car, so you come with us and we drink there, yes? Oh, uh, yes, let us all get well and truly drunk. Oh, well, okay, maybe, yes. I, that does sound fun. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, is this the last car, by the way? Uh, there is a door to the back of this car as well, so you're not sure. Oh, before we all go, uh, we were trying to uh, walk the entire train and see what there is to see. So oh, you might you have. This is the back of the train. Oh, but the luggage room is where I have stayed. Oh, very uncomfortable. Uh, but there's a door over there. That... Yes, this is door to the outside of the back of the train. Oh, okay. I I go take a look. Oh, uh, uh, of course. Yes. Uh, um, as as Celestina goes to check the door, Midas kind of goes with her, but also kind of just like keeps his eye on this strange Romanian man and kind of glowers okay. suspiciously. He is just, he's gone back into his little secret luggage pile and is pulling out what appears to be a couple different uh, uh, outfits and, and garments that he's packing up on his shoulder. He's not really paying much mind to you as you work towards the back of the train. Um, you walk back there, uh, both of you, and at this point, the sun has gone down and it's very dark outside. Um, and looking at the windows on the back here, uh, it looks like maybe you're in an area where the temperature drops quite a lot at night. You see like some frost, some light frost rhyming the window and uh, you decide, I mean, it's probably not, it's better not to open the door. It, it looks like it's cold wherever we are. I suppose that makes sense. Do, do we both decide that? Uh, do you wanna not decide that Midas? I, I kind of am interested in opening the door. Uh, Midas, you are now at a point where you can give me a spirit roll at just a minus four. Okay, oh. only a, only a, a simple minus four. Oh boy. Well, right now that's a that's a zero. So can zero. I get a, a curious ticket? A curious ticket. Yes, indeed, you may. A curious ticket to re-roll, please. I'm gonna use a Benny and give it another try. A Benny to re Because I rolled a minus. one that time with the minus four. I don't think it's gonna happen. I, I rolled another zero. Yeah, it's probably cold out there. And it's just the outside. 
I, I, I guess opening a, a train door on the, in, in, in while it's in motion is, is uh, it's, it's bound to be a bad idea. Oh, yes, eh, it doesn't seem good. Well, let us go drink and uh, reminisce, I suppose. Um, yes, I am ready. A lead on and we shall go and find your illustrious companions. Oh, he is. <laughs> all right. And you all turn and walk back up the train? Yeah. Yeah, and, and Midas leans over and goes, Christopher, keep an eye on him. <laughs> I'm Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, over in the saloon car, Victor, you are at the table with the rough and tumble gentlemen who have just leaned over and asked you if you know anything about Shan Fan warlords. So I think Victor tries very hard to hide his actual reaction of surprise. He was playing poker, so his poker face is probably very trained. So I think he does, unless you want me to roll for it. Um, um, <clears throat> Warlords of Shan Fan. Uh, I don't know much. I heard they're slave trading sons of bitches, but I also oh, yeah. heard they, uh, they pay pretty well. Well, sure. Yeah, I imagine they pay well, but they're slave trading sons of bitches, that's for sure, among other things. Now listen, each one of us ain't got no love for any of those Cretans what rules Shan Fan with an iron fist, stepping all over the, the common folk and using them and abusing them to their liking. And well, we had a leader. He was good with a gun, but we lost him. And uh, we got word on the movements of a, sh not a warlord, but one of their top lieutenants. We're heading there now, and it's our intent to waylay them, but we hear they're pretty good with the gun themselves. So if you are as skilled with that piece as it seems you are, if you're wanting to make a buck or two, and if you personally ain't got no love for the rulers of Shan Fan, well, maybe you could come along with us. Victor, give me a spirit roll at a minus two. Okay. Uh, I got a five. Five? A five is a success. Victor, you listen to their words and you have to admit what they're proposing is tempting, but just as you're beginning to really seriously consider them, the bottom of your foot starts to itch crazily. Yeah, uh, that's a real... Right there, uh, yeah, no, I just, I got some ants in my boots. Uh, yeah, it's a real interesting offer. And uh, I just got to talk to my associate, but, uh, uh, yeah, I'm in, yeah, I'm in. Why don't you have a, a drink then? And, uh, you make right sure that you're in, talk to your friend there, but, uh, if you mean it, well, you come back over here to us and we'll get you caught up. But hey, I trust that you'll keep this confidential. Right. Victor will stand up and nod and head towards Buster. Buster, over at the piano, the horn player is just standing very closely to you with his hands in his pockets, but you can see the earnestness in the expression on his face. Now, I know it ain't my place to go talking about uh, a man's private business, but I, I just recognize in you, son, myself, as I was years hence. I recognize that expression of hopelessness that you keep hidden. 
Now we can help you with that. Oh, that is a mighty fine answer or <laughs> solution, I guess, to my problems. Buster, will you give me a spirit roll at a minus two, please? Sure. Uh, at a minus two? Yes. That's a four. Four, not five, four? Uh, yep. Four is a success. So, Buster, it's it's a lot, uh, a lot of information to parse. Uh, the job offer, all of this stuff, and especially him saying that there might be, just might be, a cure or at least a treatment for whatever it is that's eating you up from the inside. And, and just as the wheels are turning in your head, you're distracted by the sensation of something itching terribly on your foot. It kind of like stomps his foot down uh, a okay. couple of times. Give me a smarts roll at a minus four, Buzz. Minus four? Yes. Um, minus four off of a crit fail? Uh, minus four <laughs> off of a crit fail? Oh, no. Uh, no, no. Um, <laughs> Buzz, uh, you look down uh, at whatever, you, you stamp your foot to try and uh, free yourself of the itching, and you look down and see what appears to be a, a small shining uh, coin, just a copper cent, just uh, lying on your shoe somehow, shining in the failing light of the saloon car, and heads up. And as you look down at it, he goes, well, looky there, a lucky penny. Well, that is, uh, a most fortuitous sign. This must be, uh, this must be fate. Yeah, yeah I mean, at least, uh, me coming in here talking to you. Yeah, um, I'll reach down and take the penny. Oh, uh, it fell off, uh, off of your shoe and on the carpet, so I must have rolled away. Huh. Yeah, well, that's, that's weird. Huh. Oh, well. You know, uh, a penny save is a, a penny lost, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just spent a dollar on drinks here. I could use a penny. Well, uh, why don't we say the, the next drink is, is on me? Uh-huh. And uh, you just, you think about what we talked about. How do you, I, I'll, uh, he signals over to the bartender and just points to you. Uh, as far as we're concerned, your money's no good here. You, your companions, yeah. You, you can drink on the house. Huh. Well, that's uh, mighty kind of you. Much obliged. But, uh, yeah. Uh, sorry. I, um... I need to... I, 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 I'm still looking for some people. So, uh, do you mind if I come back to you with... We can talk more? Of course. Of course. Take your time. Take a, a look around. Uh, we'll be here. Uh, just follow the sound of the music. Yep, right, right. Couldn't miss it. Uh, and he'll kind of like step away and kind of tip his hat and then look over to see where Victor is. If he's you still see Victor table. standing up from the poker table and uh, saying what looks like his goodbyes as he backs up slightly and then moves towards the bar uh, in the direction that you're going. And as you see Victor doing that, you also see the car open up at the far end of the saloon car and see Celestina and Midas come walking through. You you were heading up to the saloon car, you two, right? Yeah, we were going to find everybody else. Celestina and Midas walking up, accompanied by uh, a very funny looking rotund bald man wearing uh, faded and grungy finery. Uh, ah, yes, this is the drinks car. Uh, well, what do you say? Shall I shall I go and, and secure a round for everyone? I do have a, a little bit of uh, of money hidden away somewhere. Who the hell is this joker? Uh, apparently he uh, is a uh, somewhat distant relative of uh, Celestina's who knows her from Romania. Who are you to speak to a duke this way? <laughs> no shit. He's uh. a duke? Princess, I didn't know you had uh, any family left. <laughs> oh, oh. Do these men mock you, your highness? 
Shall I deal with them accordingly to the full extent of the law? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just. Yeah, he's definitely related to you. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Midas is going to kind of come up and, and go and like put his hand on um, on uh, uh, Buzz and Victor's shoulder and be like, ah, doesn't this seem like like a bit of a large coincidence to, to both of you that, 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 that someone who knows who Celestina is is on this train that, that, we, that we don't even know how we got Victor. here? Are you My saying this in front of him? Life. I, I, I'm, I'm saying it like kind of quiet. I am saying it in front of him, but I'm saying okay. it like to Victor and Buzz, kind of like. Gotcha, gotcha. Territorially. Um, so he does not overhear. Celestina, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Oh, it's okay. Uh, uh, Victor, my brother, he's alive. Uh, Apparently, in New Vic York. Victor's eyes are going to go wide, and he's going to grab Celestina by her arm and just kind of pull her over away from everybody. What? What? What did you say? I, apparently, according to this duke, my my brother survived as well. But I, I, I mean, I don't know. They, they brought him here, apparently, and he's been here this whole time, and somehow I missed him? You see that table behind me with all those dark-looking men? Oh, yes. I played cards with them a few minutes ago. They offered me a job. Oh, what kind of job? Well, turns out they're going to hunt down a warlord from Shan Fan, and they just happen to need a gun hand. And they specifically went for you? That's right. That sounds like trip, right? At the very least, it, it must be trip, right? Do you think the they know? Um, actually, sorry, real quick, timeout. Uh, sorry, not an actual timeout. Uh, Celestina, um, <laughs> you would, we specifically said we weren't going to say that word unless we were calling an actual timeout. <laughs> and I already ruined that. Not a real timeout. Um, brief pause, Celestina. Yes. Um, it actually, you know, now that you think about it, uh, it, it doesn't sound all that unusual. I mean, clearly this this is a, a train that you all were, were meant to be on. It, it, it almost seems like this in some way bolsters uh, your situation. Uh, it seems like fate has brought you here. You know, the more I think about it, Victor, though, like maybe this is, this is what's meant to be. I mean, there are all these stories about this old magic that works through mysterious means and maybe it's that sort of thing well you think you think matt Willinger could have done all this you think he would have like ended our contracts and put us on a train heading for exactly where we all wanted to go but like, i know I mean, he's i know yeah. he's all powerful or whatever he says but I, I, I suppose it, it's possible. I As would you think... two are talking, Duke Popescu comes over with a, a tray of, of drinks. Uh, here we are, uh, your highness. I have I have been to the bar and I did indeed have money. So for you, a drink and even for your rude and uncouth companion, a drink as well. This is a day to celebrate. <laughs> so we are all, all is forgiven. Oh, uh, good. Uh, uh, thank you very much. That's my yes, kind of you. I'm, I'm sorry about before. I. It's very kind of you, thank no, you. No, no, do not even worry. I have already given drinks to your other companions over there. And uh, you look and see uh, Buzz and Midas, you both have a drink and seem kind of confused about how you got it. Uh, and let us all uh, sit down and we shall regale each other with tales of our travels to pass the time where we drink the night away. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Duke. Uh, uh, that's a weird name for a guy in the West. Wait, that is his title. It's not name. Oh, got it. He cool. is Duke. A Duke. A Duke. A Duke. Duke Popescu. Duke Popescu. In exile. Popescu. Popescu. Okay. Uh, it, we actually have to um, find somebody uh, right now. So uh, you know, oh. maybe if we can uh, just call it call it good for right now, and and see if we can uh, continue on our our way here and we'll, we'll come back Plus, oh, who are you looking for i can go with you and help you look it could be good it's more eyes yes two more sets one more set two eyes, two eyes four if you count the eyes in the back of my head yeah. uh, i don't know what they're looking for because you don't know who we're looking for 
I, 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 oh. I don't, I don't. He, he kind of looks at, uh, Midas kind of looks at Popescu and, and sort of like, I, I, I don't know if I trust him. I, what is this? Be a fool to trust him. <laughs> what are you say? Uh, he, he's okay. Listen, I know that uh, we uh, are a bit strange and different, and he he clearly, you know, by comparison to what you may be used to. But this family, your family, this family as well of mine, and and this big deal. I mean, it's the whole reason I'm here at Carnival is to be able to have some kind of power to stop people who did the things they did to And my now family. you do not have to worry, your highness. Your new family can can come with us. Uh, they can join us in the old country. They can all come together. Let us, let us sit and toast and drink to this fortuitous day. It's not first time that we travel outside of America with, with Carnival. I know it's not often, but maybe, maybe whole carnival can't come. Yes, sure, of course. Uh, we can get to New York and send word to carnival to meet us there. There are still many preparations your brother must make. Oh, oh, all right, oh, okay. M maybe, I, I, I guess we could uh, consider it, but can, can we at least figure out uh, for, for sure how we got on this train first, where oh. we're going, what happened? Yes, it is important. We, we are don't going know. to New York. All right, to but, I, I the thought we were, I thought... new family. Oh, yes, but we don't know how we got on train. So oh, it's very easy, Your Highness. You buy the ticket, you uh, get on the train, show them the Wait. ticket. Sometimes okay, you look. hide in a fake That's luggage. Starting to annoy me. Out of character, uh, uh, Victor, did you tell us where you'd only told Celestina? where yeah. you were going. I've okay. only told her. Okay. Yes, uh, to New York. Okay, yes. Um. So you uh, get more drinks and we come celebrate. We just have to do one thing real quick and we'll be back. Hold up, hold up. New York? I thought we were going to Georgia. All right, well, uh, Duke here said it goes past Georgia. Many oh, stops, yes, but, but, uh, but, 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 wait, by wait, way wait. of Georgia. D d d does that make any sense, though? W would this train go all the way to Georgia, one of the, the southernmost states in uh, the former Confederacy, and, and then make its way up to New York? I, I mean, yeah. it hasn't it's... been that long since since the North and the South have, have reunited, has it? Has there even been, is there even a railroad that, that is completely connected you the entire You worry way? too much, friend. With as much money as this rail line has, it's private car. It can go wherever it wants. Oh, what the rail line is this? Oh, it's private rail line, I am told. Very hush-hush, big money American. Oh. I, I have even heard, perhaps this train is not supposed to be on this line at this time, but shush. Oh, wait. But there's multiple cars of, of uh, a coach, just like normal people. Yes, yes, well, you know, money must grease the wheels, but money, much money can grease many wheels, especially in this country. Uh -huh. Well, it sure knows a lot about this country. About well, I have lived here many years in exile. Okay, I mean, this is all great and all, but regardless of where we're heading or what we're doing, we gotta see if there's anyone else from the carnival on this train, because for the life of me, I cannot remember getting on this train, and I would very much like to figure that out, because no. I have some interesting things potentially happening here. I'd like to kind of talk to me, somebody. Me either. Uh, but Buzz, I also don't remember how we got here, and and it's it's frankly worrying that, that we're not more worried about how it is we we got on this train. It, it's starting it's starting to get to me. You are a very nervous bee, my friend. Uh, please, I will get more drinks. Um, you take your look around for your missing friends who you do not remember, and then when you are ready to join me for celebration, we celebrate. When we get to New York, we send word. Your whole family come. This is most joyous day. But All who, right. whose family? Your, uh, your family, you say? The, the, uh, oh, the people the you work with? Yes, okay, yes, yes. 
All right. Well, if, if you're all going to sit here and 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 drink, I'm 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 going to go. I, I'm going to keep keep figuring out what 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 what's going on in this train. No, I didn't say we sit here drink. I say he get drink. We go look. We come back and drink. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. I can't bring my drink with me. Sure. Oh, it's okay. Trouble to give it to you me. Want. I mean. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Yes. Here, yeah. Take mine. I'm, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> All right. Yes, please take these drinks. Okay. okay. Come, Christopher. Let's explore the rest of the tra the train. I'm Christopher. And then uh, I, I want to go to. There, there's another. Is this? This isn't the end, right? Nope. The train goes further on, heading towards the front. Um, are you? Who's going with Midas? Uh, I am. We'll I think all we go. Can. Yeah, I thought everybody. We're all going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're bringing, uh, you're having another drink, Victor? Yeah. Can you give me a bigger roll? Yeah. <laughs> you got can't handle my liquor. That's a ace. That's a ace. That's a 113. Right. Fine, I have been duly put in my place. <laughs> you can handle your liquor. <laughs> I was hoping for a crit fail immediately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can handle it. Boom, crit fail. You pass out. Uh, <laughs> we have also unlocked our next reward tier, which is called Choo -choo. adjusting the knobs. So thank you very oh much, boy. strangers in chat. We are going to release a straw poll out in the okay. chat right now. So oh boy. Uh, I have the link here in the document for you to put the straw poll out in chat. Be sure and vote very quickly. I am going to tweak it a little bit and uh, make it apply to the rest of the session. Don't worry about this, players. It doesn't concern you. Um, at large, uh, just because it got unlocked a, a little bit later into the session. So uh, it will still be useful. Make sure to put your votes in right away. You have uh, just until, uh, you have 10 minutes from now until the final result comes in. All right, please continue. Oh boy. Oh. Uh, yeah, so uh, I will uh, move forward. Um through the door. To the next car. Yep, let's go to the door. Okay, uh, so you all leave uh, Duke Popescu uh, laughing jovially and heading up to the bar to get more drinks as you walk through the next door and into the next train, which is much, much quieter than the one behind you. Uh, this one is exceptionally well-appointed. Uh, if your compartment was nice and comfortable, this is opulent. There are red velvet curtains with what looks like woven gold tassels lining the windows, along with super plush seats. Just your own individual seat with plenty of space in this car. In fact, there are only about six seats total in the whole of this car, and everything is fine wood, burnished metal. This is clearly meant for the creme de la creme. And there is a small folded piece of paper on each chair, though from your vantage point behind them, you cannot see what they say. There is also a door at the other end of this train compartment. Are there any people in the uh, There do not appear to be any people in this car. What, uh, I'm gonna look at a piece of paper. All right, uh, Buster, you walk over to one of the chairs and look down at the piece of paper. And as you do, you are, Perhaps surprised, perhaps not, to read Buster Callahan is the name uh, spelt out in delicate calligraphy on this piece of paper. Okay. Uh, What's it say? Well, I mean, it has my name, and it seems like people did kind of know me here or had some idea that I... I don't know, like we've been watched or something like that. Anyway, it's got my name on it. You might as well check the other cards and see if your names are on those. Why don't you all go first? I'm gonna finish my drink. Okay, I'll check. Okay, um, you are, are, is everyone checking except for Victor? Yes. Very quickly, with very little effort, you all are able to scan the names on the seats and see that there is indeed one for each of you on four of the six chairs in this room. One for Buster, one for Victor, one for Midas, and one for Celestina. The reason Victor wanted to go last is because he cannot read. So he's like, he's just gonna look at one and like, ah, oh, that's me. 
Good call, uh, good call. As everyone <laughs> kind of gravitates towards their chairs, uh, and you see, yes, yes, Celestina. Does Celestina know that? That Victor uh, Yeah. Uh, she would probably also check the other one, if there okay. was another one, and be like, cool. So, <laughs> just a thumbs up, like, oh, I <laughs> see. Were there notes on all six chairs, or just on four? Just on four. Just on okay. four, one one placard for each of you. And as you're all standing there, picking up the placards and, and puzzling over them, the door uh, towards the front of the train slides open, and a neatly dressed man in a train uniform walks through with a prim white mustache and stands at attention inside of the door. Ah, I see that you have finally found your way to your seats. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, why these, who are you? Oh, <laughs> my apologies. I, I, I should have introduced myself. Uh, my name is David Smith. Oh, of course. Uh, is that uh, supposed to mean something to any of us or? How yeah. I am the, uh, the concierge for this train. Well, <laughs> pleasure to meet train? you, Mr. Smith, but uh, where's, uh, Jebediah Nightlinger, uh, and and what have you to uh, say about why we're here on this train? Because uh, having our names here, that's a little presumptuous, I guess. Oh well, not at all. This is the uh, the very important person car, and the four of you are well, very important people. And these seats are reserved for you to use at your leisure. You are to travel only in the strictest comfort, that is the conductor's orders. Who, who conduct, who is this conductor? And how did we become a very imp important people? I've never been very important in my life. <laughs> uh, such suspicion uh, being met with uh, such uh, gracious hosting. I, I, I would hate to return to the conductor and uh, let him know that you have spurned his his kind offer? No, please. Oh. Uh, this is very kind. We just like to talk to him, is all. Or her. Oh, well, I'm afraid that's not possible. He's very busy right now, uh, maintaining the operation of the train. Too busy what? to talk to us very important people? Oh, well, you you make a good point, Mr. Callahan, but I, I am afraid, yes. Even, even the conductor must needs keep his mind on his work when he is working. But that is what I am here for. I am the concierge, and it is my explicit duty to see to the needs of the passengers here in this car. Uh, um, what train is this? Well, this is whatever train you wish it to be, Miss Moldovan. Did I have it, Okay. It, that I want to know what trend it is, not what I want it to be. Why must there be a difference? I, I, one of I, those I, makes sense and the other one don't. It, 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 this is nonsense. A, a, a train goes from one position to another. Uh, the, the, the nature of a train track is, is, is fixed and that's how things work. I, I, I don't know. a knock at the door that you all entered this car from, a small knock, very slight on the train car door. And uh, as you were saying that, Midas, uh, the gentleman, David, the concierge, looks over your shoulder and says, I, I must apologize. Uh, yes, please, who is it? And as you all turn to look, the door opens, revealing a young boy, perhaps five or six, with a messy head of uh, toe-headed hair and a uh, little bit of smeared chocolate or something on his face, and his eyes light up as he sees you, Midas, and he says, Papa! Papa! It's me! And as you look at him, Midas, he does very much look like a young boy from your dreams. Uh, in, in fact, a, a young boy who was the inspiration for your automaton. Papa, don't I look just like you remember? Uh, my this. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, if you for man, this is proof that there is something strange going on in, on this train, this, 
I, I, I don't know who this boy is. Papa, I, it's, it's me, Christopher, I, I'm real. Okay, you promised you weren't going to use you real kids. You said you weren't using little boys for your I toys. didn't use a little boy. C Christopher is, is an invention of mine inspired by a child I, I saw in some of my dreams. I, 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 look, the, the, I, I don't know who this is. I don't know what any of this is. If anything, this is just more proof that there is something Midas, strange going on here. Before you go too much further, can you give me a spirit roll at a minus two, please? Yes. I got a three. Can I get a curious ticket? You can indeed. Okay, I aced. I got a nine. A nine. That is a success with the raise. You look at him. This little boy who appears in your dreams, the, the very image you had in mind when you were building Christopher, the, the, the thing that you most want Christopher to embody. And for a moment, you feel just this shining happiness break out in your mind, but you are distracted by the intense sensation of itching from the soles of your feet. What? I, I, I'll, I'll check. I, I'll, I'll put Give my Give me a smarts and... roll at a minus, I believe, a minus two now, Midas. Okay. I got a seven, so six, five. A five, Midas. You look down at the bottom of your feet and, and oh my God, what is it? Is it, is it moving? Is it alive? Is, is that attached to me? What is it? And then you look up and you must have gotten something on the bottom of your foot. Papa, Papa, it, it's, it's me. But can I have a hug, Papa? Oh, this is... M M M Midas gets down when he is, I, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I, 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 I don't. I, I'm, I'm not your papa. There, there's some mistake here. You could be, Mr. Buchanan, if you wish to be. What does that mean? Who keeps saying things like this? Well, this is a... a very Im important establishment uh, for uh, the four of you, for any passenger. Well, we seek to meet all of our guests' needs. Okay... Well. Yeah. I kind of feel like that is going a bit further than maybe a normal trend's idea of what needs are. Well, we are an exceptional train. Okay. Now, yeah. Take a seat. Ooh, We've okay. saved them for you. Oh, okay. So say, say, say we go, okay, yes. This makes sense. This trend give us whatever we want. What is in it for No, trend? no, 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 Miss Moldovanu. Not whatever you want and what you need. Okay. Well. What, what we need, but still, what does trend get out of it? Or, or conductor or you? I am happy to explain any and all of this and answer all of your questions. Please just take a seat in your chairs and I will illuminate you and Tell you anything you request. Just one sure. question before I sit down. Uh, how did we get on this train? As Buster's asking that, uh, the young boy jumps up on the chair with your name on it, Midas, and pats the seat next to him. Sit down, Papa, sit down with me. And you hear the jovial laughter of all of the people in the saloon car behind you. Buster, you hear the strains of the tinkling ivories of the piano keys. Uh, Celestina, you hear the jovial laughter of the Duke. And Victor, you hear the clatter of poker chips and coins on a table that somehow makes you think of the spinning of the barrel of a gun. Well, you got on this train in the usual way, Mr. Callahan. Please, have a seat. M Midas is, is hyperventilating a little bit. But, but he sits down on the chair next to, to the boy. As you go to do that, there is a large, sudden boom sound, and the train just rocks a bit on its tracks, and you see the, the lights, the electric lights that line the, car, the VIP car begin to flicker and dim for a moment, and the concierge just steadies himself. I'm, I'm sorry, we must have hit something in the road, and you hear the sound of commotion 
uh, coming from the saloon car as the door slides open and James comes stumbling in, his eyes wide, his hands outstretched, looking at all of you with an expression of abject terror on his face. Do, do, don't stay. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it, it appears uh, someone who is not a very important person seems to have made their way onto the car. I'll, I'll deal with this. No, no, no. he's, he's fine. okay. You said he can stay. you said you have to cater to everything that we desire, right? Yes, yes, yes. And we don't wish to. Uh, we don't wish to burden. I you. wish him to stay. Me too. It's simple. <gasps> yes, yes, <gasps> I, I agree. Yes, 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 yes. He seems uh, rather agitated. Uh, perhaps we could find a seat for him, and uh, we can we can take care of him. Uh, please, all of you, be seated. I will escort him back to his sister, uh, Jack James, and Coach. James, hmm? come come here. You, what what are you saying? Don't stay. James is is stumbling away from the concierge, who is trying to to corner him as though he is an escaped animal. <laughs> please uh, don't listen to him. Uh, he gets fit sometimes. He saw something very upsetting as a child, and it's it's stuck okay, with you, him. Okay, you can step Not away here. from him now. Uh, Victor's gonna stand up and point his gun at this concierge and cock it and say, "Boy stays." He looks at you, Victor, and looks at the barrel of the gun, and his eyes flit to each of you. And the concierge says, "Are you quite sure I can't?" Change your mind. Well, no, you cannot. Let him stay and let him talk. M Midas looks at the the boy and, and turns back. No. B by the way, where is um gadget Christopher? Uh, it doesn't quite matter right it's now because gadget. as you say no and you look at the concierge, everything around you seems to flicker for a moment and it doesn't look like a train car anymore that you're on so much as it looks like the mottled pink rotten pulsing flesh of the insides of some animal and you see James standing there with his arms outstretched a expression of terror on his face for just a moment but then in that flicker he's not standing there so much as he is being slowly covered in what looked like pseudopods of flesh that snake up over his body and move their way up towards his face, attempting to close his mouth until for just a moment, it flickers back to looking like a train car. Can I get a fear roll from each of you at a minus two, please? All right. I got a nine. Uh, nine. I have a curious ticket. Curious yeah, ticket for I also Celestina. have a curious ticket. Curious ticket for Buster. I'd like to use a Benny. A Benny for Victor. I got a four. A four. Yes. All right. A four is a success. You know what? Because, uh, well, let's see. Uh, do we have the results from the straw poll? Um, mods in chat, if you could just put that in the rewards doc so I can see. Let's get everyone's results and then we'll see. Uh, so a four for Celestina, a nine for um, Midas. Yes. Buster, five. And Victor, also a five. Five. Uh, so let me just take a look here. One moment, folks. One moment. This could be important. Just gonna pull this up. It's the fives. Okay. The mysterious <laughs> strangers in chat have seen fit to turn the knobs in a direction that benefits you. So ah. you all, this was not the original intent, but since uh, we are already at this time, you are all going to get a plus one on the rolls that you make for the rest of this session. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you okay. very much, Mysterious Strangers Thank in chat. You. I guess they like the knobs turned your direction. Um, mm. Sorry, what had you said? Uh, everyone got then, I believe, a success on your fear roll. Um, yes. The things flicker for just a moment and reality changes around you, but before you even have a chance to process it, it switches back and David is standing there looking at all of you. Please, perhaps if you just took a seat, I could explain what is happening here. 
and James over in the corner underneath uh, the concierge's, uh, the pressure of his arm holding him against a wall continues to stare at you, but he doesn't seem to be able to use his mouth anymore. This doesn't have to be unpleasant. This could be anything you want it to be. Please, just sit down. Yeah. I kind of don't think that's going to happen. We've got to get out of here. I am going to give you to the count of three to sit down in those chairs. One? I'm going to shoot him at one. You <laughs> pull out your gun and you just fire a shot. Give me a shooting roll, Victor. Okay. Uh, that is a six. A six is a success. However, as you fire that gun, there is another loud explosion from the outside and the train rocks, but as it does, the floor of the train in front of you explodes upwards in not a shower of splinters and wood and metal, but a shower of viscera and gore, Ooh. gray mottled gore that shoots up into the air all around you and lands spattering on you, revealing a dripping hole beneath your feet, dropping out not to train tracks below, but to something that looks very much like a black night dotted with countless stars and underneath a shimmering iridescent road and on that road, a wagon. On the back of the wagon, Eustace is sitting in his chair that is still crackling with electricity. And he looks back and says, I think I got a direct shot. He's got a chance, now let's move. Jump, you fools, jump. Okay, let's jump! In a chase. Oh! Nice! <laughs> Just pop okay. over to roll 20 here. Okay. Now, chases are a very intimidating part of Savage Worlds for me. They always have been. However, I am a big fan of Savage Worlds, and I hadn't even really read through the chases as much as I should have. I think, <laughs> I think... I can do this, folks. I think <laughs> we, we can we all do it. You. You so gotta... let's pull up our sleeves and give ourselves the old college try. There is a huge gaping hole in the floor of not this train in front of you, this, this, this train thing. And through it, you can see the galloping wagons of the car your carnival compatriots down below about 15 or 20 feet below you. You appear to be up in the air above this shimmering path. And all of a sudden, you recognize the place down below you. It's the place between places that Nightlinger's jaunts take you as the carnival travels. Something is very wrong here. And as you fire that gun at the concierge, Victor, the bullet hits him. And from the point of impact, it ripples out, revealing that he is not a man fastidiously dressed in a train uniform, but some moving globulous pile of flesh with glowing green eyes and a mouth that oozes open in a moan as you look. You should have sat down! And you hear the sound of oozing and commotion and thundering against the door behind you. Let us draw some initiative cards, but first, let us set up the chase. So, can everyone see the tracker? No. no it's a blank page currently. It, no. uh, oh, wait, whoop. How about? Transport us there. Now. Ah, yay. 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 There we are, okay. Hey, we have the cards, let's deal them out onto the track. At least We've you didn't got... put us on like the next battles <laughs> map. Like Hold I did on, in let me Castlevania. Just get these out in order. Ooh, look at these cards. Oh, these are the Savage Worlds, uh, you know, the action Ooh. deck. MBD, NBD. Super Nico. sexy, super cool. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, Whoops. Okay. okay, hold on. Oh, hold look at on. our tokens. Our tokens First are so neat. First time using cards. First time using cards. Let's try this one more time. Okay, so the way that a chase works, first we're gonna deal out the chase track. That's what these cards are here. Okay, okay. There we go, that's working better. 
That's a card. That's a card. <gasps> Christopher. <laughs> no, that's not Christopher, Christopher at all. Christopher 3.0. Okay. Victor. Okay. And okay, let's neaten this up a little bit here. So, these go from left to right. Each one of these uh, it represents a stage of the chase that you have to complete in order to flee your pursuers, meet your objective, or whatever else is happening here. I think it's pretty clear here. You guys want to get out of this train. You are going to all start right here next to your pursuers, who will be represented by this here very unpleasant looking gentleman. Okay. We're going to deal initiative as usual and I will show you what we can do as we go. Are you folks ready? I yes. didn't mean to ready. throw that square, so I'm ready. sorry. You get rid of that square right now. Delete I don't know how. Square. It's fine, just leave it there. Okay, now. I figured it out. For Celestina. Yes. A jack of clubs. Okay. That's bad. Midas, an eight of clubs. That's oh. awesome. Victor, so bad. a four of clubs. No, I got quick. Bust, oh, you do have quick, ooh, and very clutch. You get a king of diamonds instead. Yes. Buster, a 10 of diamonds. Yes. Okay, so the cards are where you are in relation on the chat here on the, uh, in, in the chase here on the tracker. Your initiative cards work as they do in combat. However, clubs do represent a complication as per, as per usual and a dramatic task. So they are going to be something extra you have to deal with unless Midas and Celestina want to spend a Benny to redraw a card. I will. Celestina Ooh. will spend a Benny. Midas? No, uh, yes, I will actually, yeah. Celestina and Midas will both spend a card. Celestina, Love you get bad. a four of diamonds instead. Ew. Okay. Midas, you get an eight of spades. I'll take it. Didn't All I have right. eight of clubs last? Uh, you did, I believe, yes. I just changed suit. Eight for eight, and I forgot to draw a card for our antagonist, so they will be going on a three of spades. But you know what? That's pretty terrible. I'm going to spend a Benny to redraw. A nine of spades. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. So, movement works a little bit different here. Uh, you are going to be first, Victor. Okay. So uh, on your turn. Yeah. You can choose to make uh, different maneuvers on the chase track. You can change position as a free action and make a maneuvering roll. Since this is a foot chase, maneuvering rolls are going to be an athletics roll. Okay. If you succeed, you can move up or down one, uh, one card. If you succeed with the raise, you can move up or down two cards on the track. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can make a uh, change position action as an action instead of a free action, and you will get a plus two to that roll. Okay. What uh, you are trying to all do is get past this last card here and flee. However, you can try and flee earlier if you build at least four cards of distance between yourself and your pursuers. But we'll deal with that when we get to that point. Okay. You can also attack as per usual, like you're in a combat. However, in order to attack with melee, you have to be on the same card as your opponent. Okay. Uh, one more thing you can do, you can choose to evade. If you take an evade action, it's a free action. You'd be at a minus two to be hit, but you also suffer a minus two to any attacks that you make, kind of like the unstable uh, platform penalty as you're dodging and weaving to avoid any taking any damage. You can do evade as an action, and that increases to a minus four. A minus four for you to be hit, but also a minus four for you to hit anything at range. Okay. You can also try and force an opponent and move them on the track, if you would like. <clears throat> okay. So, all of that in mind, Victor, you are up first. Okay. What would you like to do? So you said I can maneuver, that moves me on the track, and then I can You can change shoot. position, yes. I can also shoot. Um, yes. Does, does it matter my distance for shooting purposes? Should I shoot it first does. or should I so shoot? Okay. The distance between your card and the card of your target is five, uh, five feet per card. Okay, gotcha. Okay, uh, I'm already close, so uh, I don't, is it gonna, uh, I'm not on the same card, so it's not gonna be against parry, it'll be against shooting, because we're on different cards. Correct. So I will shoot first and then move is my plan. Um, okay. Uh, does it matter if I cast spells that change anything? 
Um, yeah, it can, think of this as a mobile combat. It, it okay. works just like combat does, but also there are the rules of movement. Gotcha. Then I'm going to uh, use my Hexlinger to cast a couple spells. All righty. And then move is my plan. That sounds like a plan to me. Okay, so let me cast uh, Ammo Amy first. Okay. Oh, that's not great. Uh, but we have a plus one to all rolls? You are you are going to have a plus one to all rolls because chat dialed down the difficulty for you. Okay, <laughs> that's, nice. tech, that's still not enough. I'm gonna use a Benny for my uh, reroll. A Benny to reroll. Also, I should point out, Kevin Alexander would like to give a curious ticket to the players. And yeah. Dark Creon would like to give one to me. Thank you very much. Oh, nice. thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, that is a six. Uh, that is a six. So that is a success for casting my spell. Okay, ammo so you whammy. cast ammo whammy. As you spin your gun uh, in yeah. your hands, it lights up with the runes. And what effect? Or you choose when you shoot, right? Uh, yes, I choose when I shoot. Uh, I'm going to okay. shoot right now, so uh, I will do that. Actually, no. I'm going to I'm going to cast a second spell as well. Ooh, uh, you hex sling and no multi action penalty, son of a bitch. Because why not? <laughs> I'm going to cast boost shooting. Uh, so let me do that now. Okay. Uh, that is an ace. Ooh, nice. A raise on this. Uh, cool. So I got a 10, which is a raise on that. So that will be, a, I believe, a plus two to my shooting skill. Uh, it raises it two die types, I think, yeah? Yeah, two die types. Oh, okay. yeah, sorry, two die types. You spin Holy the cow. gun in your hand, and one Ow. rune lights up, illuminating the barrel of your gun and all the bullets within, and then you sling the gun up in the air and catch it on the other finger, continuing to spin it in the opposite direction as a separate rune lights up. And as it does, just a, a slight blue energy shoots out and covers your body and then vanishes as you feel your aim just sharpen. All right, uh, so my shooting is now a D12, which is fun. And you flip the gun back into nice. your shooting hand <laughs> as you fire your shot. Here we go. I aced on a D12. Woo! Nice. I mean, I don't know if that matters because it, it's still a hit with a raise, but I'll keep going. Uh, so that's a 21 black. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is definitely going to be a hit with a raise against uh, what used to be David the Concierge. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll roll damage. Okay, so it's going to be, uh, that's an ace on damage, uh, so that is eight plus, that's 11 so far. That's another ace, so that's 21 so far. 22 plus one plus one, is it plus one to damage also, the roll, the thing that's not Not unlocked? damage, not we'll damage. say trait rolls, but not damage rolls. Great, so that is a 23 damage. Okay, and you wanted to ammo whammy this? Yes, I will ammo whammy it uh, to be, um, can I do explosive without hurting anybody else? It's a small blast template. Uh, if it's a small blast template, then yes. Okay, yeah, I just want to see if it can like push him further back than where he well, is. I don't this. think there's going to be much of him left, but sure. Cool, okay, I, I didn't know if I could kill him. All right, that's cool. Uh, then I will, uh, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, so you fire your shot and it just rockets out of your gun with a bang, hits him square in his mass of oozing body. And from within, you see the explosion as his slimy uh, form just shoots out onto all of the walls of the train that also is not a train. Cool. Now, um, what would you like to do, Victor? <laughs> now I will do my maneuver to, uh, to jump to the next card if I can. Okay, um, so you're gonna take it as a free action? Yes. Okay, all right. So uh, give me an athletics maneuvering roll. Athletics maneuvering. Okay. Ooh, that's an ace. Ooh, that's an ace. Uh, f 16. 16, yeah, that is definitely a success with a raise. So you were wanting to move uh, two cards ahead then, I'm assuming, yes? Yes, away good. One and two. So Victor, you fire that shot at the thing that once was David the Concierge. You look down at the hole underneath you and as it looks like this whole train is sinking down towards this road that shines in the darkness below you. Do you want to say anything before you jump down? Geronimo! And you turn and look at your companions and shout that out as you just take a running leap 
out of the <laughs> hole and you fly down through what seems like an empty abyss of night before very quickly landing on the shimmering road which feels very solid underneath your feet and you get up and take off at a run in front of you you can see the entire wagon train of nightlinger's carnival running at a breakneck pace moving the horses as fast as they can down the shimmering road and towards what looks like a tear in the empty vast blackness that looks as though there is light and color and life coming from the other side of it. It seems like your way out of here. And that is what you are heading towards, Victor. All right. That is your turn. Next up is going to be Midas. Now Midas, before you go, as you are standing there, as all of this happens, the little boy on the seat looks at you. And as he says it, father, please hug me. I'm Christopher. He says it as his features begin to melt and run until he too reveals himself to be just a shapeless mass of some sort of organic material with glowing green eyes. But from behind you, Midas, you hear this high-pitched hissing sound and you hear the mechanical whirring of gears as Christopher steps out from behind you. I'm Christopher. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Midas, Christopher what off. do you want to do? Christopher, battle mode. Stop them. Okay, so you're activating Christopher's battle mode. Yes. Okay, so that is and going to be, yes. So, okay, I have a question. So yeah. I want to use the, the hinder power modifier on Christopher. Okay. I know that normally hinder like hinders the target of the thing, but I'm hoping that I can use it to like have Christopher hinder the person he's attacking. Does that seem fair? Oh yeah, absolutely. What does the hinder modifier do? The hinder modifier uh, reduces the pace of two to of the target by two of the target. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So you uh you can definitely activate him with that hinder and uh, with that modifier, and we'll say that yeah he has um like exceptional maybe his arms get a little bit wiry and longer and he's just <laughs> able to like like flip them at people yeah we'll say that happens stop them christopher stop them <laughs> okay so spend your point and make your roll to activate battle mode for christopher for those okay. of you uh who haven't been following along this is a modified version of the summon ally power <laughs> all right so this is three power points if it succeeds okay uh, i aced on the d6 uh, so that is seven. Uh, seven. Can I get a curious ticket? You can if you want to risk it. I'd like the raise. I want to give it a try. You got risk it. Risk it? Risk it for Dr. Biscuit. A risk. I'll keep it the seven. Actually, no, I'm going to use one. Um, uh, I'm you gonna added, use you one added the plus bidding. one, right? You added the plus what? one? Did oh, you add I have a plus one? one from the mysterious strangers. No, then I got an eight. Ah, well, maybe save that, Benny. Then, then I and, won't. Uh, we will say that you activate that with a raise. So, what happens, Midas? So, uh, Christopher, uh, his eyes like flip to red, and he goes, kick, 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 and uh, just like runs. And, and whenever he goes in the uh, combat mode, he's always like, "I want to be your friend," <laughs> and he just leaps and wraps himself around the legs of the uh, other people and just like grabs at them and starts beating at them. Okay, all right. Um, so he is slowing them down. Do you also want him to act? Yes, I'm also gonna have him attack. So because he was there with a raise, because uh, I did it with a raise, he actually counts as having, as being resilient. Oh, great. Uh, so he can take a wound and keep on kicking now. Yes, he can take a wound, uh, but I will have him run up to him and uh, uh, take uh, an attack. Oh yeah, Christopher is pissed at Christopher. <laughs> oh yeah, I get it. All right, so his attack is just a D4, which is a two. Can I use a curious ticket? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, that's a three, so probably not a success. Uh, that is not going to be a success. No, as Christopher runs over, I want to be your friend! And his head uh, just sort of swivels around at you at that moment and his eyes narrow as though he's resentful that that is the phrase he has to speak to this thing. And then he leaps out, his arms extending to wrap themselves around what should be this thing's legs, but it doesn't really have legs. However, he does seem to be able to slow it down a little bit 
affording you and the rest of the people who have not yet acted this turn an additional plus one on any of their maneuvering. Ooh, nice. Yes. All right, so Midas, what else would you like to do? That was Christopher. Besides that, I'm gonna try and like run to- Okay, do you wanna, um, I, you would have to do it as the free action, I guess, or else you would have had a multi-action penalty for- No, uh, I, I guess I don't mean run the action, I mean just use my movement to- Okay, so you're gonna use the change position maneuver yes. as a free action. Yes, exactly. Okay, give me an athletics roll. Oh boy, uh, I'm, they... I'm really good at athletics. Well, you get a plus one from chat dialing down the difficulty and you get a plus one from Christopher's assistance slowing yes. down your- Yes. Plus two, I'll take. I got a five. A five. Okay. A five is a success. So, Midas, you see what Victor has done, and you see what is happening here, and you turn, and you leap through the hole in the bottom of this train thing, and you fall not as far as you were thinking you were falling. You stole, you were stealing yourself for a hard landing, but instead, you hit with a jarring uh, bit of impact that knocks you back Ooh. a bit, but you are now out of the train thing and on the road nice. behind Victor. All right, next up, it is going to be uh, Goo Christopher. Uh, Goo Christopher is going Goostifer. to uh, just try and attack Goostifer. Automaton Christopher. You are not Christopher! Classic battle. Uh, what is Christopher's parry? Christopher's parry is four. Then that is a hit. Uh oh. Oh, that is that is trash. Uh, I will re-roll the damage dice with a curious ticket. Oh yeah. That's an ace. Oh That's no. A double ace. <gasps> no. That is Rip. a seventeen for the damage. Oh as my this god. Thing just tries to envelop Christopher. Um, Midas. Wait, I, I, uh, yeah, what is his toughness? His toughness is four. Okay, so that is a hit with a raise, with a raise, with a raise. That's a hit with three raises. Rip. I can't, like, use my binnies for I don't think right? so. So Christopher is sucked inside of this thing, and it says, I will show you what you are. And then after a tense moment where there is activity happening inside of its oozing body, it just spits out the husk, the unanimated husk of Automaton Christopher out through the hole in the train and down, down onto the road right behind you, Midas. Christopher! F in the chat. Um, and then it is going to try and take the change position maneuver. Um, so it is going to make an athletic roll. Athletics roll. However, I'm going to give it a minus one because it was still hindered by Christopher. That is an ace, however. Uh, so that is a seven, one shy of a success with a raise. I will spend a curious ticket to try and do better, but I can't. So a seven is what it gets. Christopher, uh, the gooey one, after uh, disposing of the the crunchy one slithers and slimes his way across the train and right over to where Celestina and Buzz are standing. And it pulls its body back. And you see what used to be his cheeks distend as some sort of fluid starts building up inside of its oozing face. And that'll be it for this thing. Gross. Midas, or sorry, no, oh my gosh, I switched cards. Um. Buster, you were supposed to go when Midas went, so Buster, I apologize. It is now your turn. Okay, uh, no worries. Um, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm going to shoot this thing. <laughs> okay, so now it counts as being in melee with it. So you are trying to meet its parry instead of hit a four. Okay. Uh, all right. But uh, you're shooting with your shotgun, so yeah, you're probably okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a plus two plus another two with the shotgun. So that's a plus four. Okay. Um. Ugh. Okay. Aced it. Uh oh, that's not good for me. Uh, <laughs> nine plus four is 13. 13, yeah, that's definitely a success with a raise. So go ahead and roll damage for a double-barreled shotgun with a raise. I believe that's 46. I'd like to use a curious ticket 
to on your damage roll? use my uh, performance to up my damage, uh, my extra raise damage die to my performance uh, die. I see you're using the sawdust and showmanship setting rule that chat unlocked. All right. Uh -huh. so Six nice. plus a D8 for your performance die. Okay, so that's- Don't forget your plus one. Zzz. Not to damage. Not to damage. Oh. So 3D6 plus eight. Or 3D6 plus, plus 3D8. Yep. Nope, plus 1D8. 1D8. I know. <laughs> yeah, I've got it. I've got it Calm here. Down I just, there, you know. <laughs> okay, that's not bad. I aced one of them. So let's see. Uh, 18, 21. Uh, 25. 25. Damage? Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you. <laughs> You fire a shot, and whatever this thing was about to do, it never will do, as it explodes <laughs> in a shower of goo, Buster. But how, however, as that happens, you hear slamming and pounding on the door to this car. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to try and move forward as well. Just use my my movement to uh, to go forward. Okay, all right. So you're doing it as a free action, so make an athletics roll. Uh, that's a, uh, six. And that's with the plus, uh, the plus one, right? Is it plus one or plus two? Because we have, uh, Christopher helping. Oh, right. Well. He hindered. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. So plus two. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's with the plus two. Six. Okay. Yeah. So that is a success. Buster, you follow Midas right out through the hole, taking a leap down through it and landing hard on the, on the glittering path below you, seeing the lifeless body of Christopher and Midas right there, pulling him up and picking him up as Victor takes off ahead of you and the rest of the carnival flees down this road towards a shimmering portal in the distance. Oh, that's rough, buddy. Celestina, you're up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what else is chasing us? Right now, nothing. Buzz dispatched whatever it was, but you see the door shaking and thundering as the force of something pounding on the other side tries to get through. Okay. But your friends have bought you an opening, Celestina. What do you want to do? I have Vika. Yes. yes. Uh, so I'm going to tell Vika to, to I'm, I'm basically, I just want to use this whole time to move do the the what is it called <laughs> uh you want to take the change position maneuver yes. as a uh action yes okay um so you will be making an athletics roll at a plus two from taking it as an action plus an additional plus two from your other bonuses so athletics plus Ooh. four wow okay it's a free success already uh that's a seven. Ah. Oh. A seven is a success, one shy of a raise. Let me use a curious ticket. A curious ticket is spent, a reroll is afforded. Oh no. I guess the same thing. I'm gonna oh. use my oh, Benny. You're gonna use your Benny? Yeah. Okay. All right, your last one. Spooked me there. There it is, I got a nine. Cool. A nine is a success with a raise, Vika squawks. Uh, you rolled a five? Oh, great. Vika squawks <laughs> and flaps her wings down and out of this hole as though beckoning you to follow. And Celestina, you do. As you do, you leap out and thinking back to some of the acrobats and gymnasts you've seen over the years in your carnival travels, you tuck into a ball as you roll down and take a rolling, uh, you land rolling forward and come up onto your feet running past Buzz and uh, Midas and right up on the heels of Victor as he runs towards the portal in the distance. You all now can look up and see what looks like an enormously huge gray speckled maggot pulsing in the air and covered with what looks like hundreds of beating fly wings keeping it aloft. But there is goo of all different colors leaking from multiple holes on its underside and it seems to be losing altitude as it crashes down towards the path you're on but then as you run you also hear the splintering of wood from behind you and you hear the cries of more of these monsters entering the vip uh, car or what you thought was the vip car in hot pursuit they will start off here at the end of the track for this next round 
First up, Celestina with a seven of clubs. Okay. Midas, an ace of spades. All right. Ace. Ace of Victor, spades. a six of diamonds. All right. Buster, an ace of clubs. Mm, and aces. your pursuers, an ace of diamonds. Whoa. It's an ace heavy round and two clubs are wow. out there. Celestina, you have no more bennies to redraw. You will have to keep the club. Buster, <sighs> do you want to switch out your card? Uh, yes, I do. All right, Buster spends a Benny, switches out his ace of clubs for a king of clubs. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> um, Another no. card, Buster? No, I'll keep it. All right. Oh, boy. Uh, so first up this time, it's going to be Midas, then your pursuers, then Buster. Okay, so the thing beat up Christopher, but yes. can, because I still have his, do, I have his like body, right? Yes. Can I activate it again? I mean, it's gonna cost you a Christopher treat. Oh. <laughs> Too soon. Okay. Uh, uh, Midas, Midas holds Christopher's I, body. Christopher. Just really quickly. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is too much fun. I'm not going to ruin it with bookkeeping. Go for it. <laughs> okay. I was, uh, Christopher. I, uh, Christopher. Christopher. Come, come on. And he, he takes out a, 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 a Christopher uh, snack and, and sticks it into his mouth. Christopher, activate combat mode. Mach 2. I I'm, want... Um, Christopher! I want to you I want to cast I want to activate Christopher twice. You want to activate Christopher twice. So you're going to take a multi-action penalty to cast the spell twice? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh that is going to be a minus 2 to each of these rolls. Are you going to take any other action on this turn? Uh, I I'm I'm going to use my free action to try and move, but this is okay. the only thing I'm Yeah. All right. Give me uh the first mad si or the first weird science roll. Yes. Okay, I aced on an eight. Okay. Nice. Okay, so that's a 12 with a minus two, which is a 10. Okay, all right, so that is a success with a raise. So Christopher leaps up to his feet, his eyes gleaming red, and he seems completely renewed by the Christopher treat. I'm Christopher. And then you have him activate, what was, the, what was it called? I called it combat mode Mach 2. Mach 2 combat mode, go for it. Give me another roll at a minus two. Oh, I aced on the eight again. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Okay, so that is a 14 minus two, which is a 12. Another success with the raise. So Christopher's right arm pops off of his body. And as soon as it does, immediately from within it, a cluster of wires start pouring out and shaping themselves into the wireframe outline of Christopher with only a solid right arm. Meanwhile, the original Christopher has similarly grown a wireframe right arm. And now both Christophers turn and face behind you. We're Christopher. Stop them, Christophers. What? <laughs> Okay, um, so right now, you guys are down on the ground, um, running, uh, and they are up in the machine. Sure. So essentially, what I'll say, I'm going to put, um, I'll put your, uh, this might be weird, I'm gonna put your Christophers on hold. To, to try and stop them if they get... They're gonna stay with you, but as soon as they, we'll say as soon as, um, if the things get in range, they'll attack. Yeah, I think that I think that's exactly what I imagine kind of going okay, on. Okay, so your Christophers are on hold, but they're still running with you. Midas, make your change position maneuver. Give me an athletics roll. Okay. Athletics. Crit fail, baby. <laughs> oh no. Okay, will you roll a D4 for me, please? I sure will. You had a club, right? No, I did not. No, I had a spade. spade. And I have oh. trouble magnet, just to remember. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. I got a three. A three. Okay. Uh, that is odd. So as you are, uh, you are activating Christopher, you see that you've done it successfully. You turn and run. And as you do, the shimmering road just sort of ripples underneath your feet, suddenly not as solid as it at first appeared, and you lose your footing as you <laughs> run forward, stumbling and rolling into a ball, suffering a point of fatigue from bumps and bruises. 
and also forcing your Christophers to go off hold as they both whip around and simultaneously shout, Papa, and start <laughs> running over to help you. So that is going to be your additional uh, trouble magnet thing. Oof, they have yep, lost their okay. hold. You they said something new. Of bumps and bruises. Uh, and that is as far as you go this turn, Midas. Uh, next up are your pursuers. You hear them screaming and moaning from up inside of this monstrous, gross creature that is falling to the ground behind you. They are going to take their whole round to try and change. No, no, I'm going to take a free action to change position. Uh, athletics, as a group. Oh, that's an ace. Ten. Uh, they um, get a success with a raise. Um, they, you, you, you look up behind you, Buster, and you see what looks like five of these things come pouring out of the hole at the bottom nice. of the creature and fall into a giant puddle on the path behind you before separating out into five separate oozing blobs, which come running up towards you all and strike out at you. Uh, oh. That is going to be, uh, let's see, one attack on each Christopher, one on Midas, and uh, two on Buster. All right, All right, first Christopher. That is a one, that's not gonna do it. Second Christopher. Uh, what is Christopher's parry? Four. That one will hit. Uh, for five damage. Okay, his toughness is a four. Okay, so he's shaken. Uh, please remember that one of your Christophers is one shaken. One Christopher is shaken. Uh, <laughs> Midas, one comes attacking you. What is your parry? It's a two. Okay, that's <laughs> also going to hit. As it comes oozing over towards you, you see it open its mouth and just come crashing in as though it's going to swallow you whole. Uh, eight damage, what is your toughness? My toughness is seven. It comes snapping over towards you and latches its hand around your arm, which you manage to wrench free, but not before being filled with an intense shaking disgust. You are shaking, Midas. These other two on you, Buzz. What is your parry? Uh, 105. 105? Yeah. They miss with uh, by a lot. Yeah, or minus 100, just five. Just five. <laughs> One is a miss. Uh, as it comes snapping up over towards you, you dance back, turning to run as fast as you can, and that is the only opening that the other one needs to latch on to your heel. Uh, that's trash. Curious ticket to reroll damage. That's less good. Uh, I will spend <laughs> one of my bennies to reroll damage. Okay, we'll go with the first one. Five damage. <laughs> five. Um, uh, that my toughness is five. You are also shaken uh, as this thing comes slurping up to you and tries to absorb your Ew. ankle. You pull your leg free, but stumble forward. Your rhythm knocked off. These things are swarming all over you all. That is their turn. Next up, Buster. First things first, Buster. You got to resolve this complication. So Buster, you are on a club card currently, and you have drawn a, clard, uh, a club, so your complication is instant death. You will be rolling Almost. at a minus <laughs> two to overcome it. And if you fail, we will treat it as a critical failure on a maneuvering roll. So Buster, give me an athletics roll at a minus two, plus two, so just a flat, just a flat athletics, you can think, or I'm sorry, plus one. You no longer get the hindered bonus. Right. Uh, so just right. a plus one to it. So. So minus, minus one. one. Okay. Minus one altogether. Uh, may I have a curious ticket to read that? You may. That? Okay, I aced it. Uh, <laughs> that's a seven. A seven? Yeah. All right. A seven is a success. So as that thing tries to absorb your leg, you turn and run and you feel your foot lose purchase on the slipperiness of the inside of its oozing body. And you almost go down, but you manage to put a hand down on the ground and shove yourself back up to keep running forward. You may now take your turn as normal, having dealt with the complication. All right, I will try to unshake. All right, give me that spirit roll. Uh, that's no good. Give me a uh, curious ticket, please. Curious ticket. You got it. Reroll. That's 
better. That's a four. A four is a success. So you mm -hmm. unshake successfully, Buster. Now you can take your turn as usual. Okay. Um, I would like to... Uh... Don't forget, you do have your adventure card. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. What was that? <laughs> It basically Out of the frying it, pan? and oh, into yeah! the fire. It puts ah. us it puts us into something that could be more difficult. <laughs> what could be more difficult than this though? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, right. Um Okay, sure. Yeah. I'll use the adventure card. Oh. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. So you are using out of the frying pan. Buster. You are barely scrabbling for purchase trying to get away from this thing. You look back and see Midas and Christopher being swarmed by them, and you see still more beginning to line up to jump out of whatever this thing that you all were inside of. You see Victor and Celestina running in front of you towards the wagon train, but the wagons are getting closer and closer to that portal, and you all are not making up the ground as fast as you could on foot. You see Buster in an instant that they are going to get through the portal and the portal is going to close before you all have even a ghost of a chance of closing the distance and getting through. And as this revelation is coming over you, you see the road that had rippled under Midas' feet now appears to have some sort of cracks spider webbing across the surface of it. You feel like with just a strong downward stomp, you could probably shatter this entire section of the road. Now, it might not help you all, but it would definitely cut off these things from pursuing the rest of your carnival friends and help them escape and live. You don't know what would happen to you all, but you know that you have to do what you can to save the carnival. Does that track with Buster as a character. Absolutely. Buster then is Buster, loyal. <laughs> tell me how you break that road. So uh, Buster then, um, Buster sees the, the cracks spidering out and shotgun still in hand, takes the second shot from his two barreled shotgun and blows a hole in the ground um, to, to cut off. You spin your shotgun out and you take one last look over your shoulder at the fleeing wagons of Nightlinger's traveling carnival of the extraordinary, and you catch a glimpse of Eustace on the back of a wagon being driven furiously by Leonard, the, the further, furthermost back one, the one that they had sent back to try and save all of you. And as you make eye contact with Eustace, you see him distantly, his eyes widening. You see him put out a hand as though to stop you. And smiling sadly, you point the shotgun down at the ground and pull the trigger. Immediately, the muzzle flashes in a way that echoes through this vast, empty void. And the place collapses around you. The road shatters as though made of glass. And you, and Victor, and Celestina, and Midas, and the Christophers, and all the rest, <laughs> go tumbling and plummeting into the endless blackness of the beyond. And that, folks, is where we will end tonight. Well, did I do that? The end of a session. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very Sorry. much to all of you for joining us tonight. It seems we have one more celebratory toast, so everyone raise your drink of choice. Vampire54 would like us to toast, we're on a train of fate going nowhere. You all, uh -huh. you all achieve your dreams, because this is a nightmare. Uh -huh. Set them up and knock them down. Thank you very much, Vampire54. A nightmare train it was indeed, and not even a train to begin with, if we're being perfectly honest here. And it seems that our crew escaped a most terrible fate of being slowly digested by whatever it was this creature is. However, their fate that lies ahead of them is not 
very clear at this point of time as our carnival posse go spiraling and tumbling into the infinite expanse of the hunting grounds. Where will they end up? What will they be doing? What the hell is going on? <laughs> For the answer to these questions and more, you will have to join us next week, next Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific time here on twitch.tv slash saving throw show for more wild cards action as the carnival, or at least these four, continue their journey such as it is. Thank you very much to all of you mysterious strangers in chat who tipped who subbed, who just showed up and had a good time. We very much appreciate you being here. Even if you can't tip or you don't want to, that's totally fine. We just really appreciate having you all here, hanging out with us week after week. Please do continue to spread the word about the show if you enjoy it and you want more mysterious strangers to join our community. You can use the hashtag wildcardsrpg when posting about the show on any social media of your choice. You can follow the account of the Wildcard uh, crew at Wildcards RPG on your social media network of choice. Follow Saving Throw at Saving Throw Show once again on any social media network to stay up to date with all of the things we have in development here at the channel coming up in the near future. Dom, what can the fine folks out there at home look forward to next on the channel? Well, on Tuesday, we have a uh, talk back with the Salt Bay crew who just wrapped up the series. So if Ooh. you're looking for some D&D &D fun info talk times with people. Not just people, <laughs> your Salt yeah, Bays. Yeah, D&D &D yeah. fun talk info times. Yeah. No, the Salt Bays. Yes, the Salt <laughs> Bays will all be there. So, uh Yes, uh, it's going to it's actually going to be really cool and somewhat uh, bittersweet. If you saw the last episode it was quite bittersweet, but uh, looking forward to bringing you more fun with with what they've got in store. So uh, tune in for that. That's 8 p.m. Tuesday, this this coming Tuesday, Pacific time. It's going to be awesome. And also, don't forget on Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time over at our friends at the Dat Network at twitch.tv slash the Dat Network, our very own Megan Caves will be running the third episode of her Savage Worlds, Harry Potter, Rippers mashup game, uh, the Department of Mystery. So if you enjoy Savage Worlds, do spend a little time over there at our friends and uh, support Megan here and the rest of her cast. Uh, they're a great crew. It's a really cool game. You're muted. Oh, you're muted, Megan. Oh, and if you like Abrea on Salt Bay, she is also on a Department of Mysteries. Mm -hmm. So check it out, folks. Uh, we have kept you all late enough. I know it's uh, almost, I, I, I don't know, 8 a.m. over on the west, on the east coast where JP is. So uh, <laughs> oh he's my in the God. future. He's it's, in the it's future. Uh, almost 3 a.m. Oh, I was yeah, that's almost I was 3 a.m. <laughs> all you have to Threes do is add five. Eight, 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 Oh, that's right. Yeah. Graham's just pretty close to 8 a.m. A simple five. Just add a five. Of and that's what you get. So, guys, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Mysterious Strangers. We hope to see you next time. But until then, we will leave you with finger fives. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know.